You guys hearing that? Hell yeah, dude. Nothing but fucking beach tunes. <laughs> oh, boy. We should get Jimmy Buffett on here as a guest, dude. I bet you he's a big old fucking TNG fan. Is, is he alive? Jimmy Buffett? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. He's oh, walking I, around. I, I he's walking know. around the sand somewhere with a fucking carrot on his shoulder. Uh, Jimmy Buffett strikes me as a type of person who might be dead. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he should be. All the cocaine and margaritas he's ingested. I wouldn't know. Uh, I mean, he is 74. I, at oh, heart. Okay. At okay. heart. Okay. Okay. But his soul. Okay. So if he were to pass away sometime soon, it wouldn't be like, oh, no, he was so <laughs> young. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like it's like if Betty White passed away now, it would be like, she wow. de- She's dead, dude. <laughs> no, she's Isn't dead. she dead? No, she's alive. Pretty Betty White's dead, dead, dude. No, no. Betty White dying would become like a massive thing because she would yeah. be like the oldest dead celebrity ever. Yeah. She <laughs> she's is living, 90, wow. She's 99 as of today. Yeah. Oh, I thought she was dead, dude. No, nah, no. Nah, I nah, apologize nah. to Betty White. <laughs> you might have killed her now. I might have <laughs> killed her. Yeah. Her <laughs> and Willie Nelson. You, you, you let you. nothing happen between the recording of this episode and the release of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> or shortly after the release of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've heard other podcasts where it happened to them. I know. Oh no. Uh, yeah. You know what? Thoughts and prayers don't work, dude. <laughs> no, they don't. I've I've they wished really, really on uh, death so many times. Uh, I no, prayed it for it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my god. Doesn't matter what you down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. No, I'm cutting nothing out, dude. You no, know no, what? No. These colors don't run. <laughs> These red, white, and blue. <laughs> Uh, it's not a, it's not a sin it? to wish somebody dead <laughs> in my religion. So, <laughs> in fact, and honestly, it's fun to if you don't wish somebody dead. No, it's, in I'm fact, like cling on. In fact, in in our in our train of thought, you know, fantasizing about the Death Note is kind of sick. You yeah, think well, about how much you could accomplish, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah well yeah. yeah, you rid you rid the world of its jerks, and then on the plus side, if you believe in like an afterlife or whatever. You know, Sick. if if they're if they're so great, then they just go to heaven. Sick. Also, like also like the Death Note allows <laughs> people to do like give really elaborate instructions before the person dies. You know, I wouldn't know because I don't watch anime. <laughs> no, no, that was in the movie, the, the Netflix Death Note movie. And I don't <laughs> trust that movie to have accurate <laughs> depictions of the anime. It became like a huge convoluted thing where they'll be like, do like 20 things before. Like, all I know <laughs> is that Death Note made the perfect casting choice in Willem Dafoe as the <laughs> as the sh- as the death god. The Shinigami, Shinigami guy. guy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's never uh, actually. I don't watch anime. I don't know what a Shinigami is. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly didn't complain about the Japanese in this episode at all. No, I didn't. <laughs> Yet, uh, this isn't newbie anime. This is yeah, newbie dude. Star Trek. And Star Trek's just Star an anime, Trek. though. Yeah, <laughs> Star, Star Trek, Trek is just a show. Dude, anime. Anime. <laughs> have, dude, have they? <laughs> Star Trek just ripped off Galaxy Express 999. Oh, Star Trek just ripped off Trigun and and Captain Harlock and oh Space Battleship Yamato. Oh my god. Uh you know what? I, have they done this? Uh you know how like uh DC's been doing this like they they'll let like uh, different animators do different versions of the comic book like they did oh, like yeah, Samurai, yeah. Batman, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, have, have they has like Star Trek no. the Gene Rottenberry's uh, uh, no, that's fucked up. The closest is there are some novels that are technically non-canon, but could easily fit into the world. It's not like outrageous. Yeah. yeah. And there are some comic books, which are like, a lot of them are normal, but some of them are crossovers. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. like they'll cross over with the X-Men, for example, that has happened. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So Wolverine's like fucking Deanna Troy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yes. That, that's the oh, first okay. thing that happened. Yeah. And, hey, and hey, Predator crossed over to the Marvel thing, so now Predator could be in TNG. Just saying, dude. I mean, it's, it's okay. Possibly- I don't know where. If you can find a trade paperback or back issues of Archie versus Predator, find them. There, <gasps> it's an amazing series. Really? Yeah, it's actually pretty sick. Oh, <laughs> it's I great know because they play, it's, it's, they play. They play it extremely this. straight. Yeah, yeah. Archie yeah, characters awesome, are just dude. being their Archie characters, but also a Predator is killing everyone. Yeah. By the way, uh, if you're a new listener, hey, welcome. We don't always talk about Star Trek. We start off the podcast <laughs> with other things, but but hey, 
Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm the newbie, Ricardo. As it's Ricardo. As stated. Yeah. But hey, I want to tell you this if you're a new listener. And if you're an old listener, because this is a confession. Uh, I tell oh. people my favorite movie is Badlands by Terrence Malick. And some <laughs> days it is. <laughs> oh, oh my God. But, but most days it's Predator. Oh, Whoa. okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Badlands is okay. You say Badlands. If you're like in a room full of like film people, they're arty. And yeah. then you're like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Terrence Malick. Yeah. 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 He's great. Yeah. But, but if you're just on a sofa alone, you're yeah. like, oh, fuck yeah. Predator. Yeah. Only when you're on a sofa. <laughs> yep. oh, and alone. Yeah. I, I, the late, late night, I turn on the computer and I'm like, what, what, what to watch now? <laughs> oh, predator. I love that what you, when your son and then went. I, and, then, and then I do is I t- turn on my fucking Express VPN and boom, I'm watching Predator. No, it's too early. It's too early for the sponsor. It's too early. Don't shill yet. <laughs> no shilling. <laughs> Listen, I enjoyed that when when your son went to school, you had been watching so much Predator that he just he started tried to explain telling to them about predators. Yeah, and he said to random nope. people, "If it bleeds, it you can kill, kill it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good osmosis. I like that. Yeah, that's that's the way better line to take away from it than <laughs> you know being a sexual tyrannosaurus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My that's- my wife. So I let my kid watch any trailer because the trailers are usually most trailers right. are not red band, you know, especially like yeah, old eighties yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So those I like whatever like. I'm like, oh, check this out, this trailer out. This is a movie you could watch later, but and get it because I have a lot of figure figurines. There's mm-hmm. like Chucky or Freddy Cougar, and for a while he got really into Chucky, like really mm-hmm. into. He's like, let me just watch the trailers, let me watch, and then find more stuff. And then I showed him like a BTS like thing from the mm-hmm. DVD because mm-hmm. uh, it shows him as a puppet, and it kind of took it away from it being scary because he was right, like, right. oh, it's informational. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it kind of like. I feel like that's how I got over things was like, oh, this is how it's made. This is how they made Thriller. Oh, it's makeup. <laughs> okay, I'm not scared. I'm, they're not Were you scared fucking... of Thriller? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Those zombies <laughs> are <laughs> creepy. Yeah. I saw and it really they dance young. like terrifyingly well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw it really young. And so my wife was like, yeah, I dropped him off at school. And she overheard him turn around and talk to another kid. And he's like, hey, have you ever heard of Chucky? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're gonna get us in trouble dude it's um, fine it's fine they're making a tv show now no He's one's going to jail eventually. i mean there's always a kid at a school that starts talking about that sort of thing it's yeah. fine might as well be your kid when i was yeah, like nine yeah. or ten my dad showed me taxi driver it's fine i'm fine ah, it's fine look at how you turned out <laughs> look how I turned out yeah, look. Like, um, look at him look I at definitely us. haven't look shot up a brothel look at us <laughs> <laughs> not yet <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. I mean, once yeah. I'm, once I'm his age. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what episode was this? Uh, this was the Icarus factor. Wow. Yeah. Which is, um, I, I, when you fly too close to the dad son. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a metaphor or not. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to really parse what they mean you, by you this. You have to stretch a little bit to, to, to make the metaphor work. If there is a metaphor. Like, is the Icarus itself flying too close to the captain's son? Or, I don't know. But anyway. I, I have a few. Uh, okay. If if you're new listeners, this is where we get into the Star Trek. All right. Buckle in. <laughs> Star Trek time. <laughs> Star Trek time. I have questions. Engage. Um, so, when the when the first, the, the original series came out, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which we haven't gotten to. We'll eventually get to the original series. Mm. Um, we don't know Probably. if we're going to. Yeah. Uh, Bagul willing if we're, if we're still alive. Yeah. 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 Bagul willing. Um, uh, so that show comes out what in like the 60s, 70s? 70s, I think. 70s. Okay. Now, does that show have like a crazy following? And then everyone was waiting for these. H- how did it work? So uh, were they, were, were everyone's like, oh yeah, they made, they made, then they meet, so they made the show, mm. then the move, then some of the movies. So first off, uh, I made a mistake. It's not the 70s, it's the 60s. 60s. Uh, I'm an idiot. Um, the other is that um, initially it wasn't very popular. No. In fact, um, they wanted to cancel it a bunch of times. Um, but the main reason Star Trek stuck around is because of good old Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball. Yes, yeah. exactly. I know that part because I'm a yeah. big Lucille Ball fan. Yeah, she's she was very interesting in that she was a bit because after uh, Desi Arnaz left their company, Desi Lu, yeah. she became sole owner and thus had uh, veto power for any decision the board made. And uh, they kept wanting to cancel Star Trek. And she said, fuck you. 
don't cancel this. She said, Fuck Good you, on you, my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like it's lack of overall popularity did catch up with it. Like it only lasted three seasons, mm-hmm. unlike TNG, which lasted seven. Right. So Oof. there's a clear difference in yeah. overall popularity. But I think it had a very good long burn. I think like people who were into it were really into it, were big advocates for it. They, that's why they made movies. That's why they made like the animated show. They kept trying to make Star Trek 2. It never worked out. So mm-hmm. like, you know. That's why whenever they try to do like history of cosplay, some of the earliest examples are people in Star Trek uniforms. Exactly. It was also a show okay. where like the cosplaying is easy it's like a uniform yep yeah and all you you don't have to do any you don't have to you can do klingon face stuff i mean back then it was racist to do that but sure <laughs> but yeah you you could do accoutrements but all you really had to do was wear the uniform have a com yeah. badge your star trek you know and yeah that that was what part of what made it like really say a, a small part but one of the parts that kept it strong amongst geeky circles mm-hmm um, but, I, but I think Star Trek, honestly, was more of like a long burn show. Oh, okay. you know, you know. And then same thing with TNG. Like, was it was it a big TNG hit? was popular right away from the beginning? Yeah, okay. yeah. Because because ba- by then Star Trek had become a, a pop culture phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. like it it, it didn't become Did it have that syndication like stewing period yeah. where it's like yeah. it was just airing all the time Absolutely. and everyone yeah. finally got to see yeah. everything. It actually okay. only really became popular by being syndicated so much across different stations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then people were like, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, that's what happened to like, even like family guy, right? Like that's what yeah. happened to them. Right. Yeah. They, they canceled syndication, brought it back, etc. But yeah. Yeah. And then that's why I think the it's, it's that that's what the original, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to say anything because yeah. I haven't actually watched enough of it to make yeah, an yeah. opinion. Let's, wait, I mean, till, let's the, wait till we get yeah. there, dude. Yeah. Let's yeah. Tarantino yeah. this thing. Dude. I, I'll just say that there's a tonal different, the, the tonal difference I think accounts yeah. for, um, back when they were just shooting the shit and trying to make a show versus yeah. now in TNG where it is now a, a phenomenon and a lot of the writing is made with that in mind. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Just well, yeah, exactly this is- like lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> exactly like lost. Dude. <laughs> I just pissed off a bunch of people, but I'm okay with that. Um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good. I just, I had, I'm always going to have questions like that. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Glad they were answered. Well, the Icarus Factor, uh, it first aired on April 24th of 1989. And uh, Dan, I wonder if uh, you can tell us what happened around then as we take our starship around the sun. All right. So back around that time, April, late April 1989, um, first bit of news I will bring up is uh, here's another one of those uh, celebrity births to make us feel old. Aaliyah Shawkat, maybe Bluth herself, was born on April 18th of 1989. And so, wait a minute. I I see you looking at me with weird expressions on your faces. Oh, no. I'm just like, oh, okay. No, I'm just like, oh, okay. Usually you actually vocalize a reaction. (laughs) Instead, I just saw you like wide eyed in in, 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 like shock and silence. I was like, wait, did did I get something wrong? I'll keep my face stone faced from now on like this. Yeah, dude. You keep your feelings inside, dude. <laughs> oh god all right uh we have to get uh somber right now because also something that happened the very next day a uh, violent assault on a woman jogging through central park oh, on this... april 19th of that right, year right. set off in an infamous case that wrongfully convicted five male teens of color and sent them to jail for various sentences of multiple years only for them to all be exonerated in 2002 when someone else confessed to the crime way 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 too late yep Fun fact, Donald Trump put out a full page ad trying to get them convicted. What so. an asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but some good news came uh, after word. The Nintendo Game Boy released in Japan on April 21st. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's it quite would release, a auspicious release. Yeah, it didn't get to North America until September of the same year. But in Japan, it released with four titles available at launch. Alleyway, which was a breakout slash Arkanoid type game. Mm-hmm. Uh, baseball. 
and uh, Yakuman, which is a Mahjong game, mm-hmm. and of course Super Mario Land, which was like the the big one that everyone wanted to actually play. Oh, it didn't have Tetris yet. Yes, you might be asking, what about Tetris? There was no Tetris yet because it was uh, going to be an initial launch. Well, actually, a pack-in title with the North American release. Yeah, that's why and, I had it. Yeah. Yeah. So shout outs to two guys in particular, Hank Rogers, who secured mm. the rights to and pushed for Tetris to release on the game. Boy, and he was also the guy who sold the idea and convinced then president of Nintendo America, Minoru Arakawa, to make Tetris the pack and title instead of Super Mario Land, which was and an excellent choice. A fucking excellent choice, man. <laughs> like I like the balls, man. Yeah. To be like, no, don't don't do Mario. Do this block game. It'll sell really well, I swear. And they both agreed and they were yeah. right. It's hyper addictive somehow. So. Yeah, man. So Super, super cool. Yeah, um, yeah. And as far as movies go, there are two. You know what? Forget Field of Dreams. I don't care about Field of Dreams. <laughs> yeah, it had a it a really small theatrical like start, and then it's it kind of picked up steam, but it didn't even break the top of the box office. What did top the box office that weekend was Pet Cemetery. Oh yeah, 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 dude. And this is oh. notable because if I don't know if you have uh, if you've seen Pet Cemetery lately or if you realize this, but none other than Denise Crosby played the mother in that movie, mm-hmm. Rachel. In fact, I believe this was the first movie she did right after she quit Star Trek. And she specifically cited that she left Star Trek to go movies. Does anyone so, mind if I spoil a piece of Pet Cemetery? No, uh, you, you you should always spoil things that are at least... If it's been a year, you, you're allowed to spoil them, dude. That's, that's the thing. Right, here, like, here, Suicide Squad, don't wait, 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 does it renew where, where does because it of Where does it end, dude? Where does it end? Where does, the does it renew ends, with the newest Pet Cemetery like, uh, remake yeah, that they did? it's been out for a year, so... Okay. Also, that one so has different plot details. So it doesn't matter. All right. All right. So anyway, the point I want to make is she died in that movie, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I same way as she did in Star Trek. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She got she got uh, blasted by this big goo monster. That was yeah, her son. Black goo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the creator. By, by the way, going back to Game Boy, uh, the creator of the Game Boy, Gunpei Young, Yokoi, Gunpei Yokoi. I think I'm saying that correctly. He also eventually made the Virtual Boy, which was not as big a success. Oh, but boy. that's not what happened in that 1989. I know. I just wanted to just point what, out. You just br- drag out the Virtual Boy to dunk on it for a second. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let Gunpoi. Uh, let Gunpoi. <laughs> Gunpoi. <laughs> let Gun. Let Gunpei have his moment in the sun that he had at the moment. That's true. That's true. Because you know the Game Boy is fine. It's a great system. The Virtual Boy it's definitely more than, was it's not. More than that fine. came later. Game Boy we'll is, get there. is the defining handheld. I'm pretty oh. sure the Virtual Boy la- launched sometime during the, the like the broadcast run of TNG. So we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, it, it just released too fast. They just didn't figure out how to make it not hurt people. <laughs> It was too ahead of its time, honestly. You know what I always thought w- was a missed opportunity? What? They should have adapted the old Virtual Boy titles because the games themselves weren't horrible. Yeah, I, I they hear. They should have her- adapted them to the 3DS's hands, like no, like, right. you know, native 3D. I, 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 cause I have heard the Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy is actually quite good. Yes. Um, but and it know. also had a Wario Land that was perfectly fine. It was mm-hmm. like just a good 2D side scroller confined to a Virtual Boy screen mm-hmm. that looked red as shit. But, you know, that's what Virtual Boy was. Anyway, oh. that was like mid 90s news. We we f- we flew in a weird trajectory around the sun. Yeah. this time. Yeah. We had we had uh, the Game Boy. Uh, we had Man- 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 Egg being born. Yeah. Man- Man- Egg. <laughs> they made Manny's that year. No, no, yeah. no, not May and Egg. Uh, maybe okay. <laughs> we're talking about maybe, not not. Oh, may- you're, oh, not you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. You I, fuck. I, oh no. Oh, I her? mental. <laughs> no, not her. Uh, yeah, we got maybe being born. Maybe she was born. Uh, Marry me. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyway, as usual, uh, Express VPN is here this week, and uh, yeah, you don't need to hear this the full spiel again. Very good VPN. Very good price, you know. Uh, hey, ma- you idiot. Are you having, <laughs> if you don't know what VPNs are, go listen to another podcast. A previous episode. I'm sorry. I had to jump in there. <laughs> uh, but basically, the VPN will, will mask your IP address and 
make it seem like you are logging into whatever from a different country. Which to borrow from Ricardo's phrasing a podcast or two ago, it keeps you from just raw dogging the internet. <laughs> yes. Don't raw dog uh, the internet. Yeah, it's protection. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used the VPN this weekend. This, uh, sorry, last week. Now tell the story. Oh, okay. Because it'll, it'll help illustrate why you need the VPN. Um, I went on a road trip mm-hmm. with my family. and you did, um, to the sex planet. Yeah, yeah. Sex planet. the sex planet yeah, of Utah, known as, known as Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so we were, we stayed in a lot of hotels, and we we were inside a lot because we didn't want to be dealing with people. So it just it was an outdoor thing. We went to Zion, a lot of hotels, and a lot of Wi-Fi because there's not a lot of signals out there, mm-hmm. not a lot of five uh, G and all that stuff. So I can't be just cruising on my phone. I have to l- literally log on to the Wi-Fi to get good good speed mm-hmm. and check my email and stuff and. I'm checking emails. I'm checking, uh, like I said, dude, this is going to turn into a long story. I lost my credit card. But so I had to input my credit card into all these companies that mm. I had, all these subscriptions that I had. But you don't want to do it on a public Wi Fi because yeah, it's dangerous. You so sure, you certainly do not. I threw on a VPN. Boom, boom, boom. I'm safe now. And I was able to do anything I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> literally with any. safety yeah literally <laughs> i was i mean honestly that is an while paying excellent my bills. use case that's actually a really really good use of vp that is an yeah. excellent scenario to, that that to that hide your activity yeah your yeah. financial activity yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. so yeah. It, it, and and express vpn works really well like we said if you're a new listener and you're like well what the fuck is this then i'll <laughs> tell you grandpa uh Dude, it's probably not a grandpa. It's probably some <laughs> some young like. No, we know dad. our demographic. They're all between like thirty and forty. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, take it, dude. Take it. Yeah, hey, yeah, grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're a grandpa so, now. Yeah, I'm a grandpa now, <laughs> and I only have a five year old. Uh, so, um, so what this VPN does is 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 it 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 masks your activities online, and not only that, but dude. We've talked about this in other episodes, but if you're new, we got to sell to you, dude. If you want to get extra content on any of your subscriptions, like Netflix, got to whisper so they don't hear me. <laughs> Netflix, Disney Plus, mm-hmm. you throw on the VPN and say you're in Europe, and you get a little more content. Not so a little more. Shit. Disney a Plus, a lot dude. more. Actually, I know, I know. <laughs> Disney Plus gives you all the Fox movies, which is really you good. It. You didn't hear it from me. If they say something, say it was a guy named Rodrigo. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't Ricardo. Uh, but if you throw on a VPN, say you're in Europe, throw on Disney Plus, uh, whether it's on your computer or on your phone, you will get all the Fox movies yeah. as well as the Disney movies. So, yeah. you and you know what? It. You know what? If you want a good deal for that, you can go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. And if you sign up for 12 months, you get an additional three months for free that means it's only six dollars and 67 cents a month which is a pretty good deal yeah you know you know and also there's like you know there's a, if you're worried about connectivity that's a thing with some vpns they only have some servers in certain countries mm-hmm. express vpn works all over the world three thousand plus servers in 160 locations spanning 94 countries and they're still adding more servers every day I, they actually added new servers for west coast like they added a santa monica vpn which i didn't oh. know they had that's all is one stuff. of the countries the united states of america because that's where yeah. i live <laughs> yeah oh you bet your ass it is and, and if, you're new, crap. if you're if you're a new listener this isn't like look we i know all these goddamn stupid fucking ads on podcasts like oh you use a casper bed <laughs> 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 these two dudes actually use express yeah. vpn dan and i, I actually use I express don't. vpn ricardo doesn't but he uses a vpn in general i use a vpn in general but i use mine because i'm locked in for two fucking years because i got <laughs> one of these deals <laughs> so i'm still locked in for another year or two um but you guys are with express vpn so uh, this is it's just a good deal guys yeah, yeah full disclosure i just locked myself in for another year oh Ooh. you're locked I'm locked. locked. I'm stuck. <laughs> I mean, I love ExpressVPN. <laughs> yeah, so that's expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek if you want to get that deal. All right. And you know who got a bad deal because her movie career kind of went down the drain after she did Pet Cemetery? Ricardo, Sometimes. could you please tell us what happened in this episode? That is better. Denise, <laughs> I can't tell you, and I will. All right. 
First of all, let's get this over with. <laughs> Did you guys like this episode? Did you guys like this episode or not? Um, I, I can't say this is a good episode. I oh liked my God, it this though. This is good. This is good. But I liked it though. Again, I love this episode. <laughs> until <laughs> until end, like right? about th- <sighs> until about maybe thirty seven minutes in, thirty five minutes in, run mm, there. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. Oof. Okay. I want to know what that point is. I'm not quite sure what point you're okay. talking about. But but I, I love this podcast. Um, I, podcast. <laughs> I do love this podcast. I love this episode. <laughs> I love this. Episode. I did like the episode. I think like, like, like if you're like being tr- like, like, oh, this is a good episode. I think I'd be like, this is fine. I think, it, but I, I like the episode because it has like an A plot, a B plot, and even a C plot. And they all feel okay. Mm-hmm. Like they don't feel like they interfere with each other or are completely separate. Like they kind of work together in some capacity, but it not feels like- a bit like, hey, what appetizers you want? You want the sampler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it feels fine. like the Let's sampler. Get the sampler. Yeah, we'll just like try a sampler. little bit of everything, yeah. and it won't all sometimes, be particularly sometimes, satisfying. But we'll at least know what it tastes like. It's the cowboy so, platter from you, from uh, 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 Black Angus. You know, you got a little bit of that. So I can't, I can't obsess <laughs> <to> that. <laughs> you mean the appetizer wasn't that fish he caught in that icy river? <laughs> Remember that guy? I, oh my I, god, I'm dating myself really hard. That was like a '90s <laughs> commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I I love I love most of this episode, but then at the end it falls apart. But it yeah. still holds up. It's actually, I'm going to spoil something for the end, but this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So interesting. Very think, interesting. I'll start off with this. There's okay. a couple, everybody, and hopefully you, you, you agree with this, but I feel like everybody, if a human being, mm-hmm. just like writing, when you write a character, I'm into writing. So when, when you write a character, there's all these archetypes. There's always a character's spine that, that drives them to do something. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's how, that's how humans are. Yeah. There's something that you inherited or you got growing up that is your spine. That drives mm-hmm. you. Whether mm-hmm. your dad loved you too much, not enough, your mom wasn't there, she was there. All these factors that you go to therapy for. <laughs> <laughs> the Icarus are, factors, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Icarus factor. Oh. Are what drive you. And and I feel like this is I think this hits hits for me because that's the kind of a theme for me. Like I'm like, okay, a th- my thing has always been like I'm always looking for, especially nowadays, because because of like toxic toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. I'm always searching for what, especially because I have a boy, a, a mm-hmm. little kid. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a five year old boy that I'm always looking to be like, what can I do to make him? I see other parents and and they're like they're very precious with their kids, and I'm like. I don't want to be precious like that in that way because I don't want to raise somebody who's a weak person, but I also don't want to raise somebody who's a bully. So this kind of is like this kind of hit for me where I was like, oh mm. man, like this is, and also like even the wharf thing that he had like this, this, this path, you know, this rite mm-hmm, of passage mm-hmm. thing that he was mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. and he needed to get through this. But anyway, there was a lot of things that I was like, oh man, these, this is like things that, that this is an old show. But it's kind of hitting. It still resonates now for me, mm. uh, and I think that's what makes fathers cool and writing. sons. You know, yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah. It's, a, like it's that. a universal theme. Where- yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I, I I went the really long way to say that this is that's the thing that resonated with me, and also like for in the beginning, uh, we'll start talking about it. I don't care. I'm not spoiling anything. Does um, go go when ahead, when when Worf was be was getting mad? Mm-hmm. I thought it was a thing where he was gonna miss. Riker so much that he was mm. like, I'll go. I can't express how much you mean to me as a friend that mm. I'm just fucking mad, dude. And mm-hmm. which is, which is how you would deal with it today. Like, I feel like a lot of dudes don't know how to say like, dude, you're they can't just my, explain their feelings. Yeah, they, we, they have it's so like, hard. Like, yeah, it, I've, I have a best friend and I, it, it's funny. I've, I've gone out of my way to not be that way mm-hmm. because I know it's, it's like, I feel like, that's like old shit like that you like keep your feelings in and Mm. i've i've said it and then he's been like dude i feel the fucking same way i just didn't know we were allowed to say it (laughs) 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 and i i've had that moment where where you're like man i i really care for you and and blah blah blah, but we can't are we are we allowed to say this and 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 i felt like that's what Worf was was going through like he's like oh my i was like dude this guy loves fucking Riker as a friend yeah and he's gonna (laughs) He's he's so angry. And that's he's why just he's taking on everybody. You, 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 you think that because he also then has the scene where he goes up to Riker. Yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. like, "I would like to go with you." 
Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And like, and he, he says his reason is because I would like to die in battle. But there's a yeah. part of you that thinks I want to die with you, like in battle with you or right, right. Yeah. next to you or yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Enough, enough about stupid spines. Um, <laughs> so the, the episode starts off and so there's like four storylines, right? In this one, it's like there's three. The, yeah. Three, there's, three. There's yeah, like three. the, the Riker daddy thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's which the, is tied into him being a potentially being a captain. Yeah. Right. You have and the, the wharf uh, thing, the and, coming of age. And, yeah. And then you have like a really, really tiny plot, which is like, uh, the star, the, the enterprise is being inspected. Yeah. Because they think Jordy made a problem in the warp engine. Yeah. And Jordy feels incompetent. He's like, Oh, I yeah. hate that they're doing this. Oh, well, that wow. one's like barely addressed. It's more yeah, of a way. It's like, it's it's like just two more scenes. Of a, yeah. It's just an impetus to get, you know, Riker family together pretty much. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it, it's really just, it's just for them to go to this. It's a catalyst base. more than a. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. I, well, yeah. I hate that part. We didn't need that part. We, they could have just been like, <laughs> Hey, we were, pick, we're picking up this, this civilian that is like an advisor and blah, blah, blah. They didn't, they didn't need that story. Yeah. In, in fact, As usual, like, we'll Uber them to another base or something. Exactly. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we're for once they actually try to write around it but at this point we don't care <laughs> we, we get it they're uber uh so uh he th- they're talking about so it's about like this. You, you choose the pain and uber it says uber enterprise and you I get know, the enterprise dude. and then you look really I closely know. at the window to see if it's purple like your phone <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hold yeah. up your Is phone caller yeah you're no, like that's not uh, our enterprise oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. um it says so, it's wesley <laughs> oh yes. no no <laughs> He's a negative. He has a negative rating somehow. <laughs> he he tried to give somebody Ebola virus. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, one of the reviews. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, f- fast driver. Good. Uh, nice use of charging ports, but tried to give me Ebola virus. Yeah, I don't so. know what, that, what that's about. Yeah, and then he got <laughs> drunk with power. Um. So so they're, they're the captain Riker uh, and Data are all talking about the stupid problem that has nothing to do with anything. Let's just breeze by this. But they talk about how they they have to go to the station and Riker's like, well, well, it's not part of like the itinerary. Like, why are we going to the station? He's like, well, there's going to be a personnel change possibly. Oh, and he, and then, and then Riker's like, Hmm, uh, incoming or outgoing. And he's like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. And he does the same thing that, that he, that Riker did in the last episode, which is, <laughs> oh, can I talk to you about something? But later, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you're like god damn it you piece of shit dude yeah, yeah. all you want to know was where i put those cookies uh <laughs> but you mean that there's actually r- reason for P- picard to be coy <laughs> yeah, about yeah, this yeah. right right it's, it's not like a life or death situation or anything yeah. yeah so it turns out that they're going to the station because uh a captain is retiring and they want uh Riker to be the the captain of the ship which is cool mm-hmm. and i thought that's awesome and it's Riker's and, life goal to be captain. Yeah, yeah. And I I mean, that's his spine. I mean, like his character spine is to be a captain, is to be and you find out a little more about why in this mm-hmm. episode. But um the the shot where Picard tells him about this position, it's really weirdly lit. Like it's really dim and it's it's really like somber. I think so I think they were trying to do a repeat of episode one. Remember when uh, he came in to the, the meeting room to talk to him and w- yeah. when he was like talking, he had that weird talk about him. He's like, you know, Commander Riker, I'm very uncomfortable around children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Scene. So because yeah. because he very specifically mentioned in this scene, I seem to recall a, a commander who uh, did a manual docking quite admirably or something like that. And he's like, I never quite he says as though he didn't order it directly from yeah, him. <laughs> I know. I think this is the writers trying to correct how you, how poorly Picard was written in the first episode. Like he's like a jackass, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> like he's like dockered manually. Good. And like, you know, yeah. like, like but in this episode, they're kind of trying to have him lampshaded by being like, Oh, I didn't give you enough kudos back then. So I'm giving yeah. it to you now sort of thing. And you know, that's why I think they kind of lit it the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have him, uh, Picard, saying like, "Hey, this captain's retiring. They want you to be captain. It's a ship that's going to go on this crazy mission, uh, and to the outskirts only- of the known universe yeah, or the known yeah. like mapped galaxy." Mm-hmm. But I thought that's what they were doing. 
but apparently they weren't. The Inter- I thought yeah. that's what the Enterprise was doing. Yeah. But- the Enterprise just, it's like, it's the Uber that hangs out in DTLA, you know, just God. downtown LA, you know. And it just gets crazy fucking people on board. Yeah. Uh, it's just, exactly, it's just exactly. a food exactly. truck that tells people where it is via Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so, so um, he's like, hey, this thing, and they don't, they not only want you because of your military, like, record, but also because you're a great explorer. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was cool. Um, so then Riker's kind of happy. Like he's like, yeah, and but it's weird. It almost feels like he's like that Riker thought like, I, I thought I had like at least five more years here and then I could be captain. Like he's right. It's kind of like, it's not the destination. It's the right there that he's kind of enjoying. And it's like, yeah. Oh fuck. I don't want this right to end. I kind of, oh, I mean, it is bittersweet in the sense mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. he, he, he achieves his ambition, but you know, he's like, he's like besties with Picard. And yeah, he has lots of friends in general aboard the ship. I mean, like, he's besties to a certain extent. He doesn't invite him and make him eggs. <laughs> but you know, sure. <laughs> Ricard doesn't also, like There's eggs. also Deanna yeah. there. Yeah, there's yeah, Deanna yeah. Troy, yeah. you know. And, there's and Data. he's always looking for a tea bag to get jealous <laughs> at. Uh, so um anyway, so uh, Picard goes, Hey, uh, we're also picking up an uh a specialist blah blah attache that's going to come in and tell you about what's happening in the ship and if you're going to take it or not he's going to advise you on the mission and so Riker goes to the the transporter room Statham isn't here in this this episode I guess he was in the <laughs> other transporter uh, but he goes in there and he's waiting for somebody to come at, c- come like beam up and who comes up but old Gr- Greg Montgomery's dad uh, for the people who have watched Dharma and Greg <laughs> Oh, oh, this I did is not, but I, this is okay. Greg's dad in that show. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. And as soon as he beamed up, I'm like, oh my God, what's Dar- What's Greg's dad doing here? He's so <laughs> uptight. This son of a bitch. <laughs> he's being someone else's dad. I know, yeah. dude. He's, a, he's the dad uh, actor. And uh, the actors is, uh, the actor that's playing Riker's dad is Mitchell Ryan. Spoiler alert. The guy who shows up is Riker's dad. Hmm. Uh, uh, Mitchell Ryan Kyle. is yeah yeah and he uh, Kyle Riker mm. uh, and the actor's name is Mitchell Ryan and he is a character actor you've seen in a bunch of stuff he was in Liar Liar he was in Lethal Weapon he was like I said in um, in Dharma and Greg uh, he's been in so many movies and so many TV shows you would recognize him right away uh, it's it was funny seeing him here and being so serious because I know him like the way I met this actor was through Dharma and Greg, and he's really funny in that. <laughs> okay. uh, he, he plays the up, uptight dad. So seeing him do some serious stuff here was really freaky. Cause I'm like, when is, when is the comedy going to hit man? <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, so you have a uh, uh, Riker who who sees his dad. Actually, for the I want to stop real quick to like bag on his outfit for just a second. Yes. It's not it's a very terrible. flattering <laughs> jumpsuit. Yeah. It's oh, not a yeah. flattering jumpsuit. And it has no pockets, so the actor clearly has no idea what to do with his hands. Yep, he's well, constantly wringing them. None of their constantly none of their, their um, outfits have pockets. That's yet. true. That's true. So I think like everyone's always struggling to do with their hands something to do with their hands, especially um, Jonathan Frakes. Yeah. He's always trying to figure out places to rest his hands. Kind of, and- he does a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Greg's dad uh, also is struggling. So like he'll like cup his hands, or he'll literally do the Montgomery Burns like excellent thing with his yep, fingers yep. in one shot. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just constantly yeah. like wringing his hands. <laughs> like he doesn't stop that. Yeah, and when yeah. he doesn't, he just awkwardly stands with his like arms at his sides, and like it's just. Everyone yeah. else also stands with their hands at their sides, but for whatever reason, with him, it, it's, I think it's, it's just much more, more obvious he doesn't have pockets because his his outfit was like a like a like a gray greenish beigey color yeah because like otherwise the- it looks like a suit but they took away everything mm. that you know makes it look nice yeah yeah they took away all the lines and separations that makes a suit yeah, like a decent exactly. looking garment everyone else has the, like, these black lined areas with, yeah. that look like it's separating but yeah but not this guy he's all anyway beigey. that that's just me taking a punch. moment to back on their fashion <laughs> sense because you know no, i'm such no. an authority yeah, uh, I that's how I started smoking in high school because I didn't know what to do with my hands. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> all right, let's right, start smoking. Uh, so you find out, we find out that a couple of things that he hasn't seen his father in 15 years, 
And his father says that he's proud of him. I'm like, oh, I'm proud of him. And like, uh-huh. he's like, oh, I thought you'd be more excited. And he's like, I, I, I wouldn't call this excited. I haven't seen you in 15 years. So I don't give a shit. Piece of shit. Uh, he didn't say that, but I wish he would have said that. Um, <laughs> and um, then we, we, we get into the beginning of Worf's yeah. B storyline, which is he's walking around and then uh, Wesley comes up and he says, Hey, yeah. did, did you hear that Riker's dad's uh, is, is on the ship? Isn't that crazy? Like that's crazy. I hadn't seen him in 15 years. Like he's trying to get, tell him I, all this gossip. Yeah. I, I and, pulled this clip cause I have never heard. This is prototypical, annoying voice. Wesley. Yeah. This like, is like nothing, season one, young kid written Wesley. Yeah. This like, I, I, yeah, let's just, just listen to it here. Worf, did you hear about Commander Riker's promotion? Yes. He didn't know his father was coming. He was completely yes. surprised. So? Can you imagine if it was your father? I never knew my father. And I didn't have a father long enough to know him. It is a waste of time <laughs> to think of such things. I wasn't thinking about it, but everybody needs somebody. Enough! <laughs> <laughs> like, why is... <laughs> why is that so hard. Why, why was Will Wheaton giving that performance? I don't know, but yeah, they really like had him dial up the annoying kid. Yeah. What Worf, did you hear? Did you hear? Uh, uh, Riker's dad's here. I mean, if the goal <laughs> was to make Worf really angry, then you know, he, yeah, he did yeah. his he did his best. But but that that means for the rest of the episode, you don't wonder why Worf was angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was annoying, that's why. Yeah. Like like I watched this with Sarah and Sarah was like, "What do you why is Wesley wondering why he yelled at him? Cuz he was bothering him." <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I wish they had done it. You know where it would have worked and there's a lot of things again we've talked about this before because mm. you guys have said like once i get an idea in my head and the idea is the oh, episode's different uh, than my uh, than yeah, yeah. my idea uh-huh. mm-hmm. so first of all since since Riker's dad was in on the ship i thought oh man the b storyline is going to be first of all i thought the he was mad because Riker's leaving that was the first <laughs> thing i thought but then i thought oh this is going to be interesting because both Riker and Data and not not both. It's three of them. Breaker, Data, and Worf are uh, Wesley's surrogate fathers. Mm, and I thought they were going to yeah, weave yeah, that yeah. story in because this is the perfect time to be like, oh, that would have been the perfect scene for Worf to be doing like some fatherly duty thing that he t- that he did, uh, agreed to do. Mm. And then that's when he gets mad at Wesley when they're when mm. they're doing something when he was doing something for Wesley that would have been even more powerful. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, tucking him into bed and he's like, "Enough, go to sleep." Uh, <laughs> he slaps him. <laughs> he slaps him. Yeah, and he fucking knocks him out. Um, <laughs> Wait, before you anyway. get too far away from it, I just wanted like, did anyone else notice that cr- the crazy hair on that female officer walking behind them yeah, in that scene? Yeah. She yeah, was just yeah. so distracting. Yeah, I couldn't oh, even really pay attention to Worf and Wesley because that lady's hair was so distracting it's like proto conan (laughs) (laughs) o'brien oh very good like you could give that to tilda swinton no problem (laughs) she's got it um so then wesley goes to um he goes to jordy i almost forgot his name damn it dude (laughs) i'm always forgetting (laughs) um he goes to jordy and he's like hey uh he basically tattletales on him doesn't it? Do you think? Doesn't it feel that way? Yeah, he's like Worf yelled at me. He's like, he's like Worf yelled at me. Uh, narf, narf, narf. Um, <laughs> and so he he yelled. He's like it's he's Wesley like, Snarf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> narf, narf. And he's like, and he's like, why could he be mad? He's like, I don't know. And, and like Jordy starts to kind of like upset with him a little bit. Yeah, he's he gets annoyed. He's yeah, like, yeah. Like yes, Worf is an irritable person. What the hell are you talking about? Like he's <laughs> yeah, always yeah. irritable. You idiot yeah um oh and another thing that i skipped over was that he um riker called security to escort his dad to his quarters oh yeah no, he never did it he just yeah. walked away he's like fuck this guy fuck yeah, that mm-hmm. bitch. yeah um and then so um jordy's now like busy and doesn't want to talk to to wesley but mm-hmm. and then now and then we flash into i was gonna say flash forward <laughs> we cut to uh, what is it? Quarter past nine. What's the bar called? <laughs> uh, ten, ten forward. forward. <laughs> ten forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, this it's a really cool scene with Riker and Miles O'Brien. Yeah, they're hanging out. And they're, yeah, they're, they're and I like a pint that. after work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th- this is actually like a really cool scene where they're kind of just kind of like just shooting the shit and drinking, and it, it's 
it doesn't look like beer. It looks like they're drinking coffee. Yeah, which yeah, is, yeah. It sucks. It's, the, it's the general dark liquid they're yeah, always he, drinking. He's definitely got some Baileys in there. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> and they he, he, even even like Miles O'Brien's like, what are your woes basically? And he's and he's like, is it ladies? Is it work? Is it what is it, dude? And he's like, ah, yeah. oh, family, dude. And he's like, oof, that's the one thing you can't choose, buddy. Yeah, uh, yep. but he does it with his accent. Doesn't sound yeah. as, <laughs> as cool as when I say it. <laughs> um, and then they're they're sitting there, and they see he sees Riker sees his dad walk in, and this is really weird because everyone seems to know his dad. Everyone. Yeah, like literally everyone. But no yeah. one's ever mentioned it. No one's ever like, dude, William Riker is your dad, Kyle Riker, dude. I've oh, yeah. my dad. He's yeah, you would think Absolutely. that would be a yeah. thing, mm-hmm. a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh. No one ever brought it up, and. Eventually, we find out that that uh, Roman Polanski. I'm sorry, Doctor Polanski. <laughs> is it Polanski? What is it? Uh, uh, Pulaski. Pulaski. I've been yeah. saying it wrong this whole fucking time. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, Doctor Pulaski. Totally not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> D- Doctor Pulaski. Um, you find out that she was his lover. Mm, which which is, is kind of a big twist. A it big twist, actually. dude. Yeah. A big twist, dude. Yeah. Big old twist, um, <laughs> which I was shocked. Uh, and so you find out that, and and but n- forget that she never brought it up. I, I get it. Like she's like, how, what do you say? Like, hey, your father and I were lovers. By the way, like, I yeah. you know we've fucked. I fucked your dad. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> and also like I'm sure he's talked to uh, in pillow talk. He's talked about like <laughs> ah, I'm a deadbeat dad, dude. <laughs> you know? I got a son out there, and yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen him in, seen in for seven years, years at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. It was like seven years. Um, and so. I'm sure I'm sure I can understand why she never brought it up, but like everyone else is shaking his hand. It's like, Oh, Hey Kyle, you're in the, you're fucking here, dude. Yeah, Long man. time. No see. And like, he's well-respected and, and no one ever, you never saw this before. And that this is what I hate that. Like you, it, it's kind of, it sticks out for me a little bit, but it's fine. It's yeah. Fine, whatever. And everyone's shaking his hand. He's like, he's like touching women. He's petting bait. He's like, they, he, they, they honestly should have just had him go straight to Pulaski. Mm-hmm. Because that no. should have just been the only thing he knew. Because yeah. like, like, it doesn't really add anything that he knows everyone. It, it just, yeah. It's just kind of distracting, actually, in the background. Like, you know, I think what they're trying to establish with that is that, like, hey, he is a man who's really, like, made a name for himself. And he has, like, a positive reputation with right. yeah. Starfleet and the greater community. And, yeah. like, yeah. you know, and this is, like, one more thing for Riker to compare himself to or compete yeah. with. Yeah, maybe, but 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 the logistically, it's just confusing. Yeah, and I, I like it, I'm saying that I think that's the intention, but yeah, I yeah. agree with you that it didn't yeah. play out very well. I think I think the only way that could work without having that confusion of like, why didn't anyone just tell right like William that, <laughs> that we know your dad is that they're actually they don't actually don't know him, but he's like a celebrity. So maybe like they're being like, oh my god, you're you're Kyle Riker, and yeah. they want to like take a photo with him or something. Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um and, and you know what's so weird and we should we should talk about this real quick how don't you think that when he hugged P- Pulaski uh I honestly you think it's a bit but I honestly thought it was Polanski <laughs> uh Pulaski uh I'm gonna write that down Pulaski when he hugs her because they kiss first they give a little quick peck mm-hmm. and then they hug and then the hug though this man has fucked this woman, dude. But the <laughs> hug he gave her was a pat. Do you guys, people who, yeah. people who uh, like I'm not intimate with, mm-hmm. I'm not even that. Just like you don't pat people like that unless I, it's, I, it's, it's cold. I just think it's so within the within the uh, the diegesis of the of the narrative. Yeah, you could probably say it's because. You know, it's in public, maybe it's in public. And yeah. also they're now just close friends. They're not lovers yeah. anymore. Yeah. I think outside, like, you know, in real life, it's probably just because they didn't have any chemistry together and yeah, the, yeah. the script is called for it. So he's just yeah. like, oh, hello. You know, like it can be awkward, you know, yeah, if, yeah. if you're, you know, told to like, oh, get really intimate with this person. They're like, okay. But like, they don't have any what chemistry. I find more awkward is how he kind of like clutches her arms first. 
yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and what then I think. He goes yeah. in for the full hug. I think that's it's why, the, like, he's like gearing up for stepper. it. He might be like trying to gear up for it. Yeah, and, like you know, you know. And then it's weird because because like, he get like, ready, baby. He gives, I'm coming he in. Her, <laughs> he gives her a kiss. Like it, it, the, even the kiss is so weird. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly. Like he, so here's he, the thing. Like, so I, I I think this is where some of like the the fast shooting schedule of the show kind of shows itself a little bit it's because usually when you have a scene like that, just to pull behind the veil of film production for a little bit, people. Um, if you have like a scene like that where it involves some sort of intimate touching or kissing or whatever, you rehearse that extensively because you yeah. want the actors to be comfortable and to yeah. know each other's like physical limits, right? Yeah. Like where can we, how far can we go? Can we kiss here? Um, yeah. Honestly, you should have like a person on, like they have actual like, you know, supervisors you can bring on the sets who are like, they deal with like how to deal with intimates, intimacy. Intimacy coach, scenes. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's actual like scenes people yeah. who ha- help handle things like that but it's really clear th- here that didn't really happen uh, yeah. i think and i and, and that's because uh tng was shot super fast yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah they basically shot it as fast as like a sitcom but they had to shoot an hour instead of 30 minutes yeah, uh, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> um yeah. I, I feel like that's a lot of that it's just like, this doesn't feel very rehearsed at all he's just kind of being like okay now here's a scene where you guys kiss each other and you're like oh right that scene's coming up now Okay, and they probably like talk to each other for five minutes in the background. Yeah, we're like, all right, <laughs> let's yeah. make this work. And they only did like two takes, you know. And that was it. It's like you get two takes. Yeah, it's like, he's like Frank Sinatra. He's like, we didn't get it. We didn't get it. Well, <laughs> well in the end, it's, um, it's it's probably a good thing that this was a public display of affection and not anything more intimate than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it it just weird because like then the next line that Miles O'Brien has is like, "Well, I I never agreed to her like that or something like that." Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it, but it's like, eh, it was kind of like not. It's yeah. like a kiss, like a weird kiss and a pat in the back. Eh, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not fully yeah. convincing. Yeah, but like, yeah, I do anyway. like that. Miles is like, "Oh, I know her, but I don't do that." <laughs> yeah, because yeah. because Riker was like, "I can't believe they know each other." Yeah, that's yeah. surprising. And yeah, it's like and, the beginnings of Miles, like you know. Having some character and sass yeah. about him. Oh man, yeah. Uh, he yeah. gets more and more lines like these as the show goes on, yeah. and it's great. Um, yeah, I want more. I want more. Yeah, and and so you have Riker being like, "Oh, like kind of inquisitive. Like oh, that's weird. That's weird that they they knew each other. Kind of like fuck. She never told me she knew my dad." And that you, they kiss in the mouth, um, <laughs> and, but you find out. Well, the scene can, it cuts back and forth, but eventually you find out that they they were lovers, and that I think. P- Pulaski for her I think Kyle's the one that got away kind of no like she kind of mm. kind of a little bit don't, didn't you get that vibe like yeah I, I think that's the implication yeah. I think yeah. I think once the whole episode is over uh, the implication is that Kyle never remarried because he never could bring himself to get married again yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not that he couldn't settle down I think it's that like he could never be okay with it because he's still kind of grieving over his wife's death and he wouldn't probably yeah. feels uncomfortable doing that. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm getting from the end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we cut back to fucking Wesley, dude. This is so, <laughs> this is a hard part of this episode. Uh, and he's talking to data now and he's talking about like, Oh, why, why, why was he mad at me? Data? Why was he mad at me? He yelling at me. <laughs> and then he's like, Hey, maybe uh, basically they're like, well, if you want to find out, go find out. You you look you find out why he's yeah. he's he's weird, and then because Wesley so fucking annoying, dude. Goddamn bitch. <laughs> um, he 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 keeps whining about like why was Worf mad at me? So then they're like, well, we don't know, and he's like, well, I have me with it's because of this or me because of that, and he's like, well, go find out, like go. You go fucking find out. <laughs> yeah, go beat it, fucker. Go find out. Like, Data suggests shit. treating him like a like a science experiment. Yeah. Like, yeah. It go go ex- it go with observe him like an animal yeah. in a zoo. Yeah, and, yeah. and then yeah. Wesley's like, "Yeah, I'll do that." He, he said, <laughs> "Great he said, idea." He, yeah. he says, "Yippee, <laughs> um, yay, Bo." Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's an exclamation so- from the very first issue of X Men. <laughs> Yay, Bo! <laughs> and then and then he'll go. I'll try spitting. That's a good trick. <laughs> Um and so uh, that's Kyle, stupid. I'm sorry. Kyle Riker, <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> stupid. Kyle Riker and P- Pulaski are talking, and you get that backstory and shit. <laughs> and then eventually, uh, Riker shows up, and he's um he says, "Hey, um, he tells Pulaski straight up. He's like, oh, you never told me you you knew my father.'" And she's like, "Well, it was never a secret. It just never really came up. Like, 
And it, it's true. Like, when is the right time to tell? Like, oh, your your dad's Kyle, right? Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, yeah I fucked him. Um. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let me give you. This. That's true. That's true. It, it's never like e- even even in a nice tactful way. Yeah, because like, even like, if, how do you even tell somebody he, like even if he gets brought up, right? Then you you say, oh, do you know my dad? And she'll go be like, yeah, I know your dad. Like, why yeah. would she go beyond that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, oh, we're very close. <laughs> yeah, we we've. we've been very like you know you don't yeah. you don't say that to the even kids. in a textual way hands, it's Marvin. weird yeah he's, he's making fucking symbols with his finger in his hand uh and so he's trying to teach data sign language yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so even like in the ta- tactful way like there's no easy way to tell somebody like oh yeah i did it your dad like it's just so weird yeah yeah um Man. yeah it's, i had it's, your it, dad it, yeah how do you feel <laughs> How do you feel? Let, let's explore that. Uh, and then, and then, and then, I could have um, been your mom. <laughs> I could have been your stepmom. And uh, and I she would have been in like, a cold minute. <laughs> she's like, it, it never came up, so I didn't. I never told you. And then Riker's like, "Hey, I'm ready for that briefing now. Whenever you are." And he just mm-hmm. fucking walks away, dude. Um, and so they, you have stupid fucking Data and Jordy helping. Uh, <laughs> Wesley try to figure out why the fuck um Worf. why the fuck Worf is all pissed and shit and n- like now they're observing him and yeah. they come up with all these theories why he's angry and like they're like well we're his friends we should go and 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 maybe he's lonely we should go and hang out with him and see if he's if that helps him stuff yeah and then Data goes over there and, and says hey, basically like hey chum and he he's kind of <laughs> mad at him uh and so it doesn't work out. Which is uh, funny because he's because uh, Data is a superior officer, so he says, so "Leave me alone, uh, sir." <laughs> he says, "Be gone." Yeah, yeah, Be yeah, gone. yeah, yeah. It's like when you used to yell at your supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. When I threaten to kill him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh god, you're a wharf. Well, you're a wharf. Yeah, I didn't threaten to kill him. I threatened to eat him. <laughs> Which is different. <laughs> that is totally different. That's, that's technically different. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Well, I, I, I said in certain I, prisons, I, it is the same thing. <laughs> yes. But I said, I said, Ryan, if the apocalypse comes, I'm going to eat you first <laughs> because you're the last one to join this group. And he actually agreed to it. And then, yeah. and then eventually we got another employee and I said, Tasty Adam, we're going to eat you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Is that's that why, why you guys call the Tasty Adam? <laughs> yeah. uh, there was two, there was two I Adams. Wasn't there, I wasn't there for that conversation, I so I thought it was just a name you gave him. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, and he was really uncomfortable. It's funny because he was the only one that was kind of uncomfortable that we talked about it all the time. Yeah. Because everyone would. Uh, oh, so, no. if you're a new listener, I... Uh, long story short, I, I had a very weird relationship with my coworkers uh, <laughs> where I m- actually met Marvin uh, at that job. And I would threaten people that I would eat them. It was first one, <laughs> last one in, first one eaten was, the, yeah, was yeah. kind of the motto of the thing. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a doomsday scenario, which is weird because when COVID started and things started shutting down, we were like, like oh, Ryan, oh. this is getting really close, dude. I may get my chance. <laughs> We're getting close to it. Got to start yeah. sharpening up my steak yeah. knife. Yeah, I even I even had like little honey packets because I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna honey roast you. Honey packets. <laughs> I was gonna lather him up with honey and the then, KFC you know. honey packets. No, you KFC can- distributes honey sauce or honey uh, flavor honey flavored <laughs> sauce. Uh, you can check you can check the packaging. It's what it says. <laughs> Yeah, that reminds yeah. me of that stupid, <laughs> that stupid scene from from that soap opera. I don't know what it is, but like it's a lady tied to a chair, and another lady just starts pouring a, a bear of honey onto her, her head, oh, and then she yeah. opens the door, and a, a live bear comes in. <laughs> um, I think that was that might have been the brave of the bold, and she's like, "I'm gonna have this bear kill you by by covering you in honey." Um, oh my uh, god. So- <laughs> so that was that was that was oh. my life dude um oh no yeah yeah um uh, what the fuck were we uh, <laughs> um oh he's talking to will right he was talking yeah, yeah. to will i think yeah yeah 
Um, so anyway, uh, he's talking to Will, and uh, he basically oh, sorry, s- I, not, not Brave and the Bold. It was on Bold and Beautiful. Bold and Beautiful. Same thing. That um. was the name. Of it. <laughs> well, Brave and the Bold is a good Batman show. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and Bold and Beautiful is a shitty soap opera. Okay. <laughs> For Claire. Um, so. Uh, he goes to, uh, Worf goes to Riker and he says, Hey, I heard you're leaving and I like to join you basically. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, I heard it might be dangerous and there might be some battles and I'm fucking in dude to die in battle is my jam, dude. Yeah. And I love jam with my toast. <laughs> um, and then we see the stupid picture of fucking Riker with a fucking fishing rod and he's like, Oh, and, and a fish. Yeah. And he, he basically says like, Oh, I never got to reel him in. Cause my dad thought it would, why are those away. pictures so low quality? I don't know, well, dude. Yeah, it, it looks old. like stills of VHSs. They're older pictures. That's why. It's just odd to me. It's like, <laughs> it, like I think everything else in the show, you know, part of the Blu-ray restoration. They, it makes me wonder: is it is it a stylistic choice, or did they did they were they just unable to source anything better? Maybe when they sharpened the picture, the boy was just too ugly. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, I oh. guess another thing is that these are supposedly <laughs> images from Alaska where he grew yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Or it's it's too clearly not Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put him back uh, in. He's not done yet. You know, it's a backdrop of Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, um, where are we at? Oh, uh. So Worf. Worf. Yes. Worf's like, I'm gonna die for you, and and Riker's like, calm down. I yeah. heard. I hear you. Get the fuck out of my room. And then yeah. Worf's like, he's like, okay, he's like I'll wait your decision. Roll. I'll tell you if I fucking go or not. Just chill the fuck out. Yeah. And he's like, I hope you do. You make the right choice, sir. Mm-hmm. I like Worf so much, dude. <laughs> uh, and so. He's, he's the uh, subject of a lot of jokes, but I, I think he's honestly a, 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 a great addition to a Star Trek cast. Like, yeah. Yeah. TNG would be would be way less interesting without him. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And then, so then you have uh, a Riker scene with his dad, uh, where he goes and is getting information, and it basically his dad's like, "Oh, you want the information? Here it is on this USB. Fucking yeah. look at it, dude." And he's like, "You could have just fucking sent this, dude. It's bullshit, dude. You're a piece of shit. You always were, and you always will be. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, yeah." Uh, and he basically says like, "Hey, why haven't I? Why haven't I heard from you?" And and it, it, it's it's a weird conversation that they have. It's yeah. just like it it doesn't get deep. It's all like on the surface and stuff. And yeah, I guess they they that's the thing is that they can't talk to each other. That um, is one of the things that I've I found a little unfortunate about all of their scenes together because they have three scenes together yeah. before their big Japanese fight scene. <laughs> which is like, uh, you know, they, for the first that's, meet, that's where the episode turned for me, dude. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well they have the, uh, you know, they meet at the, the tel- transport lounge or, or chamber or room, whatever. Um, they meet, uh, in 10 forward and then they meet again in the conference room. Right. All three of those interactions are the same. Basically. There is no difference I, in their, I will say that the one in the conference room, like it, it is a slightly, there is slightly more effort on Kyle's part. To like, he doesn't get around to the actual point, but you can tell that he's getting closer to it because he starts going right. like, well, you know, girl, like being a parent there, they don't give you a guide and, and blah, blah, blah. And then like eventually on when Riker's pretty much or when Will's just like, you know what, I'm out of here. He's like, I'm here with my hand out, son. Yeah. Like I like that is to me like, you know, that that is a that is a that is a significant effort on his part to try. I, I, to uh, get Will to say something else back. Yeah, that is that is. It's because Will denies him there that it doesn't get any deeper. Yeah, it it stays the same. Otherwise, yeah, it's true. It's like it's Will's reluctance to talk that makes it the same each time. Mm-hmm. It's because yeah. he keeps on shutting him down. Mm-hmm. Totes, 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 totes. Um, my goats, totes, my goats. Um, and then we have the scene where. <laughs> Oh boy, this is this is a hard scene too. Um, he uh, Kyle meets uh, Deanna Troy. Yeah, that's which is a weird, also, awkward scene. Yeah, yeah I like this scene a lot. And and he kind of is flirting with her, and like he's like, yeah, like father, like son, we got the same taste in women. If you know yeah, what I mean, wink, yeah. wink. So I'm here, you know. 
wink wink and troy will uh, have none of it <laughs> yeah yeah and Troy's like shut up you fucking deadbeat dad you fucking <laughs> idiot. uh and she basically is analyzing him i which well, for what reason i don't know like why did we have to i don't understand like she's like she's kind of like trying to read his feelings but it's like it sh- he doesn't matter like he's here on a bullshit fucking mission to get his son back let him be well, I, 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 I think I think she's doing it specifically for Riker's benefit because I guess she, so. I guess she, so. You know, she cares about Riker a lot, or yeah, will I yeah. should say. And then, like, it's also yeah. possible that Pulaski uh, requested this of Deanna. Also. That's true. She they they came Pulaski's into the right there. Medical bay. Like, yeah. This is all yeah. part of like the setup that Kyle suspects mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. loud, and Deanna confirms. Yes, this is a setup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The doctor does introduce her, him to Troy. Yeah. So I, I it, it's, it's definitely like Pulaski, and probably also Troy, just trying to be like, all right, you and you and Will have a lot of issues. I've heard oh, yeah, about and, it a and, lot, and this like, can be Troy confirmed probably. in their later conversation too, because both Deanna and uh, Pulaski kind of commiserate, like, "Oh, those boys, they'll never grow up." Yeah, yeah like yeah, they have yeah. one of those conversations. It's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. such a shame that they just can't talk about their feelings. <laughs> Like yeah, people. Yeah. And then you have a scene with uh, Riker and the captain. And mm-hmm. basically, th- it, like, the captain's trying to sell him, sell Riker on this idea. It's like, hey, th- you're, you're, I know the guy on that ship, dude. He's, I know that, I know a guy. Uh, yeah. He speaks like 40 languages and he's like, he's like fucking awesome, man. And <laughs> Riker's like, oh, 40. I'm, I'm impressed, blah, blah. But there's no data on that fucking ship. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, he's no um, data could also pick up billions yeah. of languages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like forty is not impressive, dude. Yeah, right. Um, uh, like only forty. Like how the computer <laughs> could pick up more than that? Yeah, that's true. Um, also, they have universal translators. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> that doesn't, matter. It doesn't matter. So, so they, um, uh, Kyle Riker shows up and. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and William Riker is like he rolls his eyes, he's like, God damn it, he's here now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Stop showing up. Stop showing up places you and ruining him, people. Don't touch the captain because you're gonna ruin him too, dude. <laughs> um and basically Kyle's like, Hey, can I have a word with my with my son? And he's like, sure. And he leaves. And basically, this is kind of the scene where they have it out. They talk about how uh, they don't have it out completely, but you talk ab- about most of it, how like you basically find out that he was very, very young when his mom died Mm -hmm. and he kind of blames him for that in a weird way. Like he's like, not blames him, but he's like, he's like, you shouldn't feel this way. Cause like you didn't even fucking know her. (laughs) It's like, but it's like, yeah, but I still miss her. Like she wasn't around. I, I still lack, also, he admits he abandoned him when he was fifteen. Yeah, and he's so. like, I, I gave you, I gave you a good twelve solid years. And it's yeah, like 13, thirteen years. years, thirteen years. Yeah, and that means he he was abandoned when he was fifteen because his mom died when he was two. Yeah, and right. then he says he hasn't seen him for fifteen years since, which makes Riker thirty now. Yeah, which so like he he's low. He's no. He's basically known Riker for less than his life. Yeah, yeah, less than half his life. Which is kind of really crazy <laughs> for yeah, this is this is very much an estranged father situation. But yeah. yeah, this is also like the beginning of like at first Kyle um is depicted as like, you know, I just want to talk it to my son and open you know, open up and, and settle an old, you know, like, you know, get our feelings out there, whatever, but you don't know why or how what the actual circumstances are. Yeah. But as the episode continues or progresses, Kyle comes off as more and more of a dick. Yeah. Um, dramatically and, and actually so. that began yeah. um, in the previous scene with Deanna because Deanna is like kind of reading him as, as she talks to him. Yeah. I really like that scene because it, it, it's, it very quickly frames him as like, why are you being competitive with your own son? Yeah. yeah. Really like, weird. She also calls out like false humility when. Yeah. Like you're kind of a jerk in general. Yeah. Like, you know, n- let alone with Riker, you know? So it's like, it, it's it, it kind of reframes it where like you know i guess initially you may just be wondering why Riker or will i should say is so cold yeah and it's just like oh he's been nothing but nice and everyone likes him yeah uh, he's, he's a good a, man yeah he looks like a cool guy but he's, he's a piece of shit man fucking pulaski likes him but he, he's a he's True. a huge asshole he actually you know yeah and then god damn it dude <laughs> And then um, you have the scene with stupid Wesley, dude. I hate Wesley so much. Dude. He's back again. He's back again. Doing yeah. up to no good again. So Wesley's like, hey, I, I've, I've done all this re- research and it's because 
he's mad because this is the age he'd have this like coming of age thing yeah. and he's not having it. And yeah. so he misses it. And actually this is when you find out like, Oh, Wesley kind of really cares for Worf and cares about what this is why I hate this scene. Cause it made me flip, flip, flip it on, on <laughs> you know, my, my feelings. Cause I'm like, Oh, Wesley does care for fucking Worf. He wasn't yeah. just doing it to like, be like, Oh, I'm so sad. Like he's like, Oh, my friends mad or hurting. Like what? Yeah. What's the problem? Let's, let's figure this out. But he never had his bar mitzvah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where he gets beat the shit beat out of him. <laughs> um, but but you know what? Like sometimes you want to just be mad. Like I, I go through that That's all the time. True. Like, I, honest- I just want to be pissed. Honestly, I view Wesley's thing as more of like nosy. Like if yeah. someone's mad, you can just leave them alone. If yeah. you ask why they're mad and they say, I don't want to talk about it, you should respect that, maybe. I mean, like the, the show ends up being like, oh, it ended up being great. You know, all turns out hunky dory. Uh, but I think in real life, they would just be like, why did you do all this? You know, I wasn't expecting it, you know, because you probably have to be mentally prepared for something like that. Like, what if you missed your bar mitzvah and you're like, oh, I wish I had my bar mitzvah. And then someone out of nowhere throws you a bar mitzvah. You'd be like, yeah. what the fuck? I didn't memorize the Torah. Like, I didn't yeah, even figure yeah. all this shit. Oh, I didn't even shave yeah. today. Well, luckily, <laughs> Worf was was very ready to have his yeah. ascension. He's like, yes. He I, was I, ready I, to I get need, the need, shock shit, like shit uh, he, it out of him. Like, he was I, into it, man. Yeah, he, yeah. He, do- he dove right in. <laughs> this is the, like, electrocution version of, like, waterboarding. <laughs> Um, electro boarding electro boarding <laughs> and so you, the next scene is is Riker Aim for visiting, the nipples I know <laughs> it's Riker visiting uh, Pulaski yeah. and he basically uh, comes in and apologizes because like they have a really good relationship and so he comes over and he says hey sorry like you and my dad was none of my business like I was fucking out of line blah blah and basically like Pulaski gives him like intimate details about his father like this is a man who suffered all his life but at the same time it's like yeah but I feel maybe it's me now or I don't know, but like, like if my wife dies, like my number one problem is not my fucking grief. My number one problem is like, okay, how do, how do, how do we get my kid not to be messed up because his mom's not around? Right. And like, yeah. how do I give him like the best chance of not being, sure. you know, not, not like, oh, I'm grieving. Oh, I'm going to go fucking, I'm going to leave him at 13. <laughs> Well, that's because you're not a dick. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. so. I mean, that that's, um, that that is Kyle's fault. Yeah, is that he is uh, very self absorbed. You know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of yeah. It, it, I forgot we were at some party, like some kids' party with like a bunch of close friends, and who were a lot of them are parents, and we were talking about this, and it, I don't know how this came up, but they're like, "Hey, so if you're on a raft and." You have to. You could only save one person, so you could either save your significant other or the kid. Who do you save? And everyone was like, "Oh, one person." I won't reveal who was <laughs> said. I'll, I'll I'll save my spouse. And and then the spouse was like, "Absolutely not, you idiot! You save the kid. You save the kid. Because <laughs> if we survive, then we're done." Like, cause you, you didn't save the kid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't think about that's true. Yeah. 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 And my yeah, thing was like, Oh, I'll just jump off. A, I hate boats. I would, I would just, I'd be like, I'll kill myself. You yeah. guys could stay alive. I'm out. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Seasick. It's not worth yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I hate boats and I hate the water. Uh-huh. Um, so that's the, the, it's weird. Cause like you, 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 you like, People who are not dicks will gravitate towards like, oh, you do whatever is best for the kid, not whatever is best for fucking me. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you have again Jordy doing doing this. This did we talk about this already? Yeah, Jordy who did the bar mitzvah thing. Yeah, they they set up the bar. It's weird. The editing is weird. They set up the bar mitzvah and they yeah. cut away and they back come back to Will and, like, and, and then they cool. cut back and forth. So it's yeah. like the two threads are happening at the same time. Yeah, so, and yeah. Then, but then eventually you find out that that they're gonna they're gonna set up the bar the painful bar mitzvah and they're all gonna attend because the family has to attend and they have mm-hmm. to watch him go through pain. <laughs> um, I want to ask funny you guys a quick question about the scene between Will and Pulaski. The mm. At the end of it, Pulaski, like, Pulaski says, like, I would have married him, but he had other priorities and, right, and Will's like his career. And then that is what prompts Pulaski to say, like, hey, you know what? 
if you're going to go to the Aries, I would leave your emotional baggage behind. <laughs> and like she, you know, kind of tags him with that on her way out. And it's like, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think that's like. No, I don't think she's correct. I think she's also clouded by her relationship with with Kyle. And I think sure. because she was viewing it mostly from Kyle's perspective, she's probably viewing it as like he was just so broken up over his wife. That's also why she she never they never got married or, you know, became a long term couples because. My interpretation is that Kyle is still broken up over his wife's death. But honestly, like... He's a Gendo. Yeah. He's, he's a Gendo to- Ikari. Back yeah. to anime. Don't worry. We'll have more <laughs> anime soon. Uh, third impact. Anyway, I just oh, want to get your read on, on that Pulaski bit. Because, yeah, like I was like, I don't I don't agree with this lady. No, I don't agree either. I don't agree with her. What she said. She's she's stupid. She's She's dick drunk. Um, <laughs> oh god still and yeah dude she's whipped dude and uh <laughs> and uh, and she's just predicting because because he's she's her simping lover. for kyle <laughs> yeah. uh and and it's stupid like she should again be it's funny because she's very logical she's very logical yeah but, and right. i think that's, and, and yeah, that, that's an issue that, i kind of had with plastic in, in general about yeah. this episode it's well like, I, I th- well i think she's allowed to have an emotional weak spot and i think having a relationship okay could sure be an emotional weak spot yeah. i do agree with that but her like the story she tells about how she fell for him i don't buy it's like yeah, he was yeah. the only one who survived a really harrowing experience what a well, wonderful I think, man well i honestly think it's just like a really roundabout way of her explaining Florence Nightingale syndrome. That's about it. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like, I guess, sure, yeah, that's whatever, like, he survived, whatever. No, he's, he's just a patient, and she fell in love with a patient. That happens thing. <laughs> you know, that might have been how they were writing it. Where, like, yeah, she was, I like, honestly, you know, just framing it in that flowery way with, like, nah, you just, you just, you were just taking yeah. care of him, and yeah. And he it was bullshit. I call used bullshit, his dude. masculine wiles on you. Um, <laughs> He uses masculine wild. Uh, he uses his his wit, um, and so they decide they're going to throw him a bar mitzvah, and mm-hmm. that they're going to invite everybody. And uh, Wesley invites like so he they invite uh, Data Pulaski, and then they <laughs> they they uh, Wesley goes to Miles O'Brien and he's like, "Hey, we're doing this this yeah like this, in passing." He's just yeah, he's yeah, passing, he's like, <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, oh, I've heard of that." Uh, yeah, I'm fucking in. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I've heard of that. Yeah. It's gonna be really painful. I'm fucking in. I love how he's being included in more and more activities, even yeah. though he's not like a core member of the team. Yeah, like, like, like yeah, you know, he's totally like Jordy for it too. And, yeah, yeah, Jordy yeah, and Data yeah. are like buddies, right? So they'll hang out, you know. But then, like, there's, there's also Miles there randomly. <laughs> like, sure, kid, I'll I'll come. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Don't worry, I'll I'll bring uh, a casserole. <laughs> So then uh, Riker goes to Deanna Troy and they have a scene where he's basically going to say goodbye to her. Mm. Uh, and he, he it's like, it's, it's a weak scene, I think. Oh, um, oh, I don't know. Do you guys think they needed it in the show? And like, it, it wasn't, it didn't, I wish they would have concentrated more on the fact that like, they're going to now be apart more. I mean, like, like mm. he could have said like, oh, I'm going to miss you. Like, everyone's I, always hiding their feelings. I think it would have been... What's, I the, think it, what's the pet name that, like, that Betazoid pet name that... Imzadi. Do they even say it in this scene? I don't think he says Imzadi in this That's scene. That's kind of weird so, that they don't. Yeah, I feel like the writer forgot that. I do think it's a bit, like, too much because both Riker and Troy have kind of always kept their feelings... I mean, like, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of nice that it breaks down and, like, they kind of, like, go, oh, my God, and they hug each other. But yeah. it feels a little too melodramatic. Um, I like the scene. I like the idea behind the scene. But, but I guess, you know, maybe. It's kind of interesting that this sort of scene didn't happen back when T-Bag was about to take her away. I know. Well, that's because he was being a dick. So, like, that kind of I guess that's why. true. He was being, like, a jealous asshole versus, like. Fucking T-Bag, true, true. Dude. Yeah, yeah. All T Bag wanted was electrolytes. <laughs> uh, he uh, does. Deanna Troy ever uh, find uh, uh, her own personal T Bag? Her, her own electrolytes? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna say anything. Okay. Um, okay. good, good. There, there are some relationship things in general on the show that I think would surprise you down the line. Really? Yeah. Okay. Are there warring factions like Team <laughs> Edward and Team? I don't even want to remember the other one. Uh, Never mind. Forget this. Jason? No, his name's not Jason. Oh, is Yakub. Jason. 
<laughs> it was Jakob. <laughs> Jakob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the uh, Riker has this, the the Rikers. <laughs> Yeah, have the another Rikers. scene together. The Riker, uh-huh. the Rikers have another scene together where they're like just like just being like they're just kind of throwing like blame on each other. Like they're mm-hmm. like, "Well, you weren't around." It's like, "Yeah, but you're so selfish. You were just a boy." Blah blah. I yeah. was so in pain. It's like, well, it's like it's, it, I, I really part of me is it likes it because it's like, oh, they're they're fucking they're shelling it out. And you get to know more about Riker and stuff. But like. This scene is really weak for me because it leads to this the shitty scene after this, which is the yeah. fighting scene. Uh, it just basically, comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like it's like, and and I get it because look, I've been that when we're where I'm expressing my feelings towards a family member, and I said I'm really mad at you. Get out of the car. We're gonna fight right now. <laughs> so that <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> fuck you. You made me upset. Get out of the car. We're gonna fight right now. <laughs> So I, I totally understand it, but we never fought in weird, like, what is it? Is, is it a Japanese thing? It's a they completely it, fucking they fictional call it thing. Ambo Jutsu, which is oh, not fuck, a real dude. martial art. No, Holy this is this shit, would be a, a stupid martial art. <laughs> okay. So they, they basically, the fight escalates and they, they end up challenging each other to like this weird martial arts thing. That's like American gladiator. Yeah. Um, it's a like, combination. It's of, American gladiators meets Tron. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they words are Tron outfits and it, they combine it with the, the, the blast visor from star Wars where he, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they make a big show to show how blind they are. Cause they just kind of blindly feel around each other, yeah, which is stupid, which is weird. Cause they, there's no, this style of combat serves no purpose no, in real life. He, okay. If the, you're blinded, you're never going to have the stick that tells no, you where people are. <laughs> no. And he calls it like the you. ultimate form of martial art. It's like, what? Yeah. It's called a martial art. They were originally invented to kill people. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. put a blindfold in a battle. But I, okay, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> stupid. At Dan's request, I've pulled all the Japanese lines they say. Perf- I, I, I love uh, Dan. So, Perfect. So here we go. And Bojitsu. The ultimate evolution in the martial arts. <laughs> they don't even pronounce the same <laughs> phrase the same way each no, time. No, no, it's all wrong. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, anyway, man, we're already too far into it. I kind of wanted to d- double back and like we didn't discuss the scene that he had with Picard, did we? Oh yeah, no, yeah. We there is this, there's that scene he has with Picard, and Picard uh, very uh, nicely lays out the choice for him. Basically, you can be a cool guy on a cool ship doing cool things, but you're only second in command. Or you can be big fish in a little pond, and exactly. uh, you know, and the then pond- even kind of like gooses it a tiny bit, and so like, hey, you know. There's nothing like, you know, being at the range, you know. Yeah, there's there really is no substitute for holding the reins. And he gives him like a little look. <laughs> uh, aroused is, at all times, you know. <laughs> which is a pretty cute scene. Yeah. Um, and to me, that's a scene like uh, I was watching this with Sarah. And we kind of both said out loud. Oh, he so they're trying to say he's the real dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. His life. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> he's actually give him, giving him fatherly advice about the decision versus his father who hasn't even talked to him about it i know i know <laughs> yeah i just like i i tend to really enjoy scenes between just those two yeah they have they have good they have a great dynamic good chemistry as actors but then they go um, to, to, to then the rikers have you, their ambo jutsu right right so uh, back to the it. clips you just played um what they are trying to say <laughs> is a phrase in japanese <laughs> that goes yoroshiku onegaishimasu which is like what you would say to like it's a general introductory phrase you'll say to someone to be like, "Hey, uh, you know, please treat me well." Or like, you know, we're about to work together, or I, or I, like I f- engage in an activity together. Like, you know, let's do this right. I feel like I've heard that at like a restaurant. Like, I don't know if that's true. Benny Hanas, like Gaishimas at that la- last part at least. Someone Gaishi- challenge you oh, to like, a fight Gaishi- at Benny Hanas. Onegaishimas on its own is please. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like gotcha, Yoroshiku gotcha. is like what you're asking them to do, and on- Onegaishimas is like the request. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Um, but they pronounce it 
really bad. They all only ever <laughs> seem to say onegachimas. <laughs> and um, I do want to point out a couple things about the arena that they're in, or the little, the, like a little, little, mm. little ring that they've the made dojo? for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the heck to call it. I guess they would have called it a dojo because uh. um, that's stereotypical. Uh, <laughs> but over on the banners on the right side corner, it says Urusai Yatsura. Which is noisy, annoying people. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's awesome, dude. But that's I awesome. believe that's actually supposed to be a reference to an anime series called Urusei Yatsura, which is just a variation on the same words. Oh, man. Um, and oh, that man. is where uh, any, if any anime fan is, uh, is listening, that's where the character of Lum comes from. Mm-hmm. Or Ramu. She's the like tiger bikini wearing green haired. Yeah. Um, it, it, she's on future funk albums. You can you can find yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so her name in in Katakana Ramu is on the left side of the ring, and another oh. character's name Ataru is on the other side, the right side of the ring. And Ooh. in the middle of it is the kanji for Hoshi, which is star. And um, you can see that in uh, the the that kanji uh, that character is part of the Urusei Yatsura logo. So, whoever I, I, designed this set was a really big fan of Urusei Yatsura. It, I have a feeling it was probably Michael Okuda because he designed a lot of the graphic stuff in the show. Possibly. But yeah. uh, apparently, like, Ambo Jutsu and, like, all of this, like, actual, like, how it oh. goes and stuff was oh. written, uh, was most likely devised by one of the co-writers, Robert McCullough. Mm. He was, uh, he co-wrote the teleplay of this episode and he states that, uh, I was studying karate, so I just used all that. (laughs) I knew the karate philosophy and I wanted to have an ultimate confrontation and then reconcile. That's how it evolved. This fight sucked ass, dude. It's 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 pretty shitty, man. Yeah, just to, just to summarize the fight, it sucks. It turns out he's cheating, um, and he's always been cheating, which is why Riker could never beat him. And then they hug. It's the stupidest thing. I like yeah. it doesn't feel earned. Like Nothing the reconciliation. Feels earned. Like like the for the the like wait, you you've been lying to me my whole life? Yeah. So not only did you leave me, but you <laughs> yeah, lied to me. Exactly. And, which pushed me to be <laughs> <You> like <laughs> the best I could be, better than you. And you were just cheating all along. And he's like, Yeah, isn't that fun that I that I made you become so successful by fucking yeah. lying to you? Yeah. It's like no, you piece of shit. Yeah, I would be here, even dude. more furious. Yeah. I wouldn't suddenly be like, oh, you've been a good dad all along. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would have like, taken off my gloves off. and my, my gauntlet and been like, now we're going to fucking fight. Like it, made, <laughs> it made me question yeah. whether or not like this ended up being like a good thing in Riker's mind because he finally got the confirmation. No, you were better than your dad a long ass time ago. Yeah, maybe yeah. that could be why. Like, because he because he did basically say you were already better than me by the time you were 12 or something, you know? Yeah, like it's him, like, a, like finally just being very candid about like you're a better man than i and you know at least in this regard i don't know like that that seems to no, be like in a every regard for him in <laughs> every regard he's a better man yeah and it's just like true, it's true. just not he's taking this that di- was, th- this he's taking this piece of shit fucking child wesley and he's basically raising him like his own <laughs> even though his deadbeat mom fucking left Meanwhile, his deadbeat uh, dad's uh, in the captain in the captain's ready room. I know, dude. <laughs> Agonizing um, over old theorems that have no solution. <laughs> I know, dude. God uh, damn it, dude! If, if that was supposed to be the thematic thing, where like it's like you were always better than me, right? He should have said that. He should have been like, "Will, right, right, right. You've been better than me for twenty years. I've just Th- been this trying to catch." Went from like really good, like, "Oh my god, we're gonna learn so much about Riker's dad," and like, "Oh my god, th- this." I still stand that the part where it's about friendship and about Worf, that part's really good still. I, I think I that's like, fun. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love yeah. Klingon stuff. Yeah. So like, I, I like when they bring it up and like, you see their rituals and like, we didn't describe the ritual, I guess. It's like, there's, there's eight Klingons. I think, I think it's eight. Yeah. And, and like, they use like corporate branded pain sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it sounds like there should be a little trademark at the end of pain stick. <laughs> yeah. They spell it S T I K. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird. Here's the thing. This is exactly how you get initiated into a gang. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. It, it's it might as well be cattle cause... prods instead of pain sticks. And then yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like it's just or a, it's just a, a, a line dudes. of paddles at a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just eight dudes just beating the shit out of you, and then you're in a gang, and it's the exact same thing, just with electricity. Yeah, the Klingons are a huge gang. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, totally. <laughs> They're West Side, um, and he he basically like like he's like yelling, confessing like his his worst fears or something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I love Riker's eggs. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, I think he's the best cook, but everyone hates him. Oh. I mean, that really does weigh heavily on your soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to let it out, man. Yeah. And everyone's like, dear God. Dear God, he loved the eggs. They were so horrible. <laughs> he, oh. he cooked him like such a white person. Didn't even put yeah, yeah. Pe- like salt and pepper. <laughs> Nothing, dude. <laughs> they they look so horrible. And and everybody, everybody that's watching that are his family. You know, yeah. so it's like Wesley, Data. They're just like freaking the fuck out because yeah. they're they're really going at it. I just honestly. realized that they say family, right? Like, yeah. oh, they're supposed to bring his family? Like Dom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, okay, Jordy and Data definitely count, right? Yeah. Wesley counts because he's like a surrogate father to him. Um, Pulaski doesn't really count. He's, Maybe. He's, she's just kind of there. Miles and, definitely uh, doesn't count. Miles is their pl- <laughs> is is Pulaski's plus one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Miles is just there. He's just like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm just here for the pain. <laughs> uh, um, and the way but, he like witnesses it and kind of like like regards he's like, what's happening. Yeah, he's it's like, like grinning. Like, he's like, Ooh. <laughs> this is what I signed up for. <laughs> uh, and then then they, there's a scene where um where uh, Deanna Troy and uh, Pulaski are like they she asks like oh how's Worf he's like oh he's never been happier <laughs> he, he fucking came after all that pain uh, and and she's like oh great and how are the Riker boys oh they're gonna fight and he's like oh, yeah, well, you know boys will be boys uh, yeah. and I, I hate that dude so then yeah. you have the fucking fighting scene we already talked about it it's fucking bullshit it's like, and also, uh, Kyle Riker, he's wearing fucking, I think he's wearing Jordans. I think he's wearing like <laughs> er, er, early, like Jordan, at least they're, they're, they're nice wearing sure. sneakers. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. If you look, he's definitely wearing like, I, I yeah, they, they are lace up shoes. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're definitely like modified Nikes for they sure. Could be. They could both be wearing modified Nikes. It looks yeah, like. And, yeah, yeah. And I think. They're both Jordans, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. They're modified, but they look like they're Jordans, like an early, oh. early version of Jordans. Very good. Um, but anyway, which were they? Bat? Were they? Yeah, they, yeah. He was playing already. No, they, they might not be Jordans. They're definitely Nikes, but they might not be Jordans. Wait, Jordan wasn't playing in '89. I don't know. He no, he wasn't. Right? No, he was. He was. He he was, but he wasn't. He's still in college. You know. I uh, think he was already. No, yeah, in yeah. The he NBA. didn't. They didn't. He didn't. They didn't win their first championship till 1991. Okay, so yeah. So he wouldn't have gotten a deal yet, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. And so they fight this this lame ass fucking oh, god damn this fighting scene is so stupid because when would you need to fight blinded? Unless that, like, oh, th- there's rays of sunshine that blind you. But then again, maybe if you're both inside of like a giant's ear and you both only have Q-tips. And, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's you it. know, you, you're not, you don't know what you're going to encounter in there. You got to know how um, to fight those things. Uh, inner space type situation, you're saying. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. I just researched this. The first Air Jordans actually came out in late 1984. So really? they definitely could be Jordans. Oh, then they're Jordans. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. They're Jordans. Um, all right. So, how did Jordan have like he was a slam dunk champion before that? Like, he was very popular because he he was very flamboyant in slam dunk contests, and also, oh, I had no idea that he had such a long and stored career even before the Bulls championships started going on getting underway. Yeah, I mean, mean, Space Jam didn't tell me anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we have the stupid fight scene that like, it's kind of like half American Gladiator, half, you know, do you guys remember that show? I think we talked about this, Marvin, before. Mm. It was with Bruce Lee's daughter. She hosted it and it was like half soap opera, half like American Gladiator. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know I, what it's called. I could not, I couldn't remember the name of the show either. Listeners, if anyone remembers this show, it's like American Gladiators, but yeah. there's a plot. It's like a there's, story plot. Like, there's like literally like a soap opera. Like a dojo. Weaved in. Yeah. 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 They all live in like a dojo. And sometimes the dojo gets invaded by people like ninjas. And then yes. the, the contestants have to fight off the ninjas. Yes. But at the end of the show, they like show like in the middle of the show, they show off like feats of strength. Like one guy's like. And, and scores. Oh, Wait, yeah, was like this the one, one that employed like Mortal Kombat actors? It might not, have been. It's not like, that same like one, one thing, show, is it? It's like there's like one thing where like, uh, oh, I will demonstrate by my strength by lying on a bed of of nails. 
and he like gains favor by doing that. Yeah. And like at the end, they have like a contest of some sort. And it felt Look, American Gladiators E, but like mixed with like a Mortal Kombat styles narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know uh, what it if, is. If anybody knows, just email us, uh, we'll, we'll, or else we'll go on a deep dive. We'll start a newbie, <laughs> whatever that show is. Um, <laughs> but to, to wrap this episode up, basically, Riker comes back at the end. He settles things with his dad, and he he cheated all along, but he's okay with it. Uh, and and he basically <laughs> tells the captain, "Hey, if it's all right, I'd like to stay here. I've I've had a change of heart." Uh, I'm just, I'm motivated by self-interest right now. I'm in the best place I can be and I'm good. And the captain's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> get, get the fuck. Aside. And I thought this was a perfect time for like, cause, cause you, there's a close up of Wesley. And I thought it was a perfect time. Th- this could have just closed out the episode and, and kind of been like, Oh, Riker really fucking grew from this. Even though his dad's a stupid shit and he really mm-hmm. didn't reconcile anything. He could have like, he could have just told Wesley like he was proud of him or something. Like mm. he could have even like snuck in there because he, he or like close. Wesley, you're doing a great job. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Could have been that easy, and it could have yeah. been like, wow, like he's he, he's he, trying he, not to he repeat things. Yeah, he ends the cycle. Of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's there's two things I wish they could have done with the end. One is that I thought the whole point of the Icarus mission was going to be a twist in that uh, Kyle Riker actually recommended him for the transfer. And it's because he's jealous of his, like, prowess in Starfleet oh. and thus wants to get him out of here to go into, like, a low-level position. Some, like, or die know. somewhere on the mission. Not necessarily die. But no, like, he just, wants him dead, dude. <laughs> but, like, you know, just to, like, just to, like, be, like... Well, like, just to knock him down a peg and not really do anything else himself? Yeah, just to knock him down. Like, because as soon as Deanna brought up why you're so competitive with your son, I was like, oh, this whole thing is a ploy for him to knock his son down in a, mm. in a in an underhanded way like before. And I thought if that was the case at the end, he would admit that and tell Riker, don't take the mission. You, you're much better here at the enterprise. And that's why he accepts the enterprise, like stays in the enterprise. Yeah. So I thought that could have been cool, but that you doesn't know, I happen. feel like that, that, that narrative that you just like established could still work. If you just make it your head cannon and Riker and will just says like, no, nah, I'm not falling for it. Yeah. yeah. you could, <laughs> the, But then the other thing I kind of wish that happened, which could have been cool, but they would never do it is Riker accepts and he leaves for the rest of the season. And he has to come back for the finale to save them. And then maybe in like season three, star Trek TNG is actually about two starships. And they oh, work cool. side to side, yeah. you know? They kind like, of did this- that with Battlestar Galactica. Oh, see, that'd be cool. Because it's not called Star Trek Enterprise. It's called Star Trek The Next Generation. Yep. So true, it could have been two things going on. It could have been The Next Generation because it's after the original series. Yeah. But also mm-hmm. within the show, The Next Generation, because Riker is now The Next Generation as well. Mm-hmm. So you could have had two starships going on. It's like Triple X and then Triple <laughs> X State of the Union. <laughs> Where they brought exactly in Ice Cube. Exactly like that. Because yeah. yeah. Triple X wasn't Xander Cage. It was <laughs> the agent Triple X. Mm. You could replace him with anybody else. And then part three, you had Xander Cage come back. The return of Xander Cage. Yeah, it's true. Um, oh, man. Um, anyway, this... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to rate this a seven just because there was some cool stuff. You know what? No, I'm going to bring it down to six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Six. There was really cool things. And then at the end, they fucked it up. And this, I mean, we've had so many Bush League episodes in the season <laughs> that it, it rates a little higher, I think, overall. Mm. But uh, the ending talking, is disappointing. The ending so disappointing. Dude. Definitely, yeah. definitely. It doesn't feel okay, earned. A uh, real quick question then for you, Ricardo. You began yes. this episode saying that you loved it. Yeah. Is is this rating of six still yeah, reflective after, of your love of it? No, no. It's okay. it's reviewing. So our discussion it. brought it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I Just mean, I track still, where you are. I Would still you- stand that like the the themes I really love. Mm-hmm. Like I, another theme that I love is loyalty. Like mm-hmm. and I, and again, it, it was in my head that sure. that Worf was upset because because he was so loyal to 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 um, Riker. Mm, but got it. I still stand that like there's really good parts of it. Like the whole Worf thing is really cool, and like I like how Wesley turned it on me. Like because I hated yeah, him in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, so, and then he did this thing that was so selfless that was right. for Worf, you know, and. 
they could have done so many good things. I think I, I like it. I liked it also because of the potential. Yeah. Again, the, the potential of the, story, head, of the story and the nah. potential of this yeah. episode are really good. Like, yeah. it, it, cause it's always like, and I think character exploration in Star Trek can all, can have always have the potential to lead to some really good storytelling. I, I mm-hmm. think Star Trek is often at its best when it's like exploring a corner of a character, and like understanding them a bit more, you know, it's, it's part of why I think Measure of a Man is so good. It's understanding all these yeah. different corners of these characters. Like, I mean, that character- episode's okay, but no one fucking measures their dick, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, you know, and then that I think, like, they didn't really get into it very far, which is a disappointing thing. Yeah, yeah. So what, what would you, you give What it? do you guys give it? Yeah, what about Dan? What did you give it? Wait, did you already give a rating, Marvin, or are you just asking me for mine first? Oh, I'm just asking for, I, I, I would just say a seven. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I'm with Ricardo in the sixth territory. Uh, I that ending. Oh boy, yeah. Like I, I, I can laugh at Onagachimas forever, though. So um, <laughs> you know, that's something. To, to, like- to, to, to respond to Dan's thing that he asked me earlier, I feel like I started at like a seven, seven and a half. But then, like okay. talking about it and reviewing it, mm. I'm like, God damn it! Like this makes no fucking sense. Mm. And <laughs> and it brought it down to like a six. But yeah. I I stand like that. We've had so many Bush League episodes that this kind of stands out a little bit because there was so many cool things. I agree. I agree. Um, I'm sure. I, the, the I, I would rather watch this than the the fucking two Picards and one stone. <laughs> like even yeah, like there's more um significant bits in yeah, here. Yeah, like yeah. things of substance that have like. You know, Potentially more larger implications or, yeah. or ramifications. Yeah, dude. So even release though the it- Pulaski sex tape. And- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, oh no! Well, yeah, it is that. definitely the most hot and bothered we've seen um, Diana yeah. Muldar this season. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, that was that was the Icarus Factor and another episode of Newbie Star Trek. It's been a long one. Thanks for yeah, unexpectedly. Yeah, <laughs> but thanks for hanging out with us, guys. I uh, appreciate it. If you'd like, if you have been liking the podcast, it'd be great if you know you could give us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podcast Addict or wherever. But only if you feel like it. You know, you don't have to. And also, if you have a question or you want to contact us about something, you can reach us at contact at newbiestartrek dot com. And in fact, we do have an email this week that I'd like to read out. Holy um, shit. It's, oh, it's a less surprise. A, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a surprise. It's less a question than it is a proposal. Huh. Um, okay. So, so I I'll, will, I'll read it. I will not. Pro- I propose that <laughs> I reserve don't the stop right to refuse dicks. this, rep- this oh, proposal. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's, that is part of the thing. It's actually a discussion that I want to um, ask about with you guys. It's from a person named Dan. Uh, it is not our Dan, obviously. I think, I think it's our Dan, dude. <laughs> He just surreptitiously. Dude, we can't go into that vortex. (laughs) We have to fucking kill this guy. And we're not going that fucking vortex. I have to shoot this email now. (laughs) Um, So this is from Dan. Uh, It says, hey, all I suggested on TikTok that you guys watch the documentary about the craziness behind the scenes on TNG called Chaos on the Bridge. But you should wait until the end of season three to watch it as it has spoilers for the first three seasons of the show. Keep up the good work and thanks a lifelong Trekkie Dan. So that is the thing I wanted to propose as a possibility. Mm. So the reason why I wouldn't instantly accept Dan's proposal is because so far we've been watching the show through the lens, at least for Ricardo, uh, the lens of someone who's watching the show as it came out in order right more or yeah. less we, we do uh condense those long breaks in between like yes, random yes. like w- like spans of three or four weeks where they just had no episodes right uh, but but we're trying to not subvert it too much right yeah, like we're of, definitely not binging uh, 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 this stuff uh, uh, yeah also also i'm not um watching like uh, the, on the next you know exactly. on the next mad men <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 nor so- is ricardo going to youtube and looking at you know um, extensive analyses of yeah, Star Trek. Yeah. I have been going or- to Pornhub using my ExpressVPN <laughs> and typing in Star Trek porn. I haven't. Been- <laughs> oh. This oh, ain't Star there's- Trek TNG. <laughs> yeah. This ain't even. This ain't Star Trek TNG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But so that makes me wonder. Like, we went we, off the do, rails on this do- Dan question. <laughs> do we want to watch Chaos on the Bridge? I think I think I do because I want to know how, uh, how chaotic it is. But I, I agree with Dan. We'll watch it after there's no spoilers. Thank okay, you. so so Ricardo votes yes. Okay, yeah. what about you, Dan? 
I agree with me. <laughs> the, the, it's a thing. So when did it, I, I don't even care when it came out. The thing is, as as a fan, if I would, if I were watching the show live when it aired, I'd want to know everything. I'd want to watch. P- I believe BTS Chaos on the and Bridge came out like two years ago. Uh, it's fine though, as long as it's it's two it's it's after no uh, as, uh, as long as there's no spoilers, ago. no spoilers. Yeah. I'm good watching it, and I and I think it'll maybe give us a little behind. Like if I was a uh, a hardcore Trekkie back in the day, I mm. would want to know, are they called, are they called Trekkies or Trekkers or oh, that's what are they Trekkies. called? Trekkies. Trekkies? Trekkies? Okay. Go Trekkers. That's fine. Yeah, I, like that. I think for a while there was a movement choo, to try choo. to establish Trekker as the official one. Cause Trekkie was like somehow had a more negative connotation. Yeah. But, really? Yeah. Is like, it, is it cause I, it's like, I don't know is it like, cause it's diminutive, that. like a little Trekkie, you're a little Trekkie. I don't know. No, Perhaps? I don't know. Or it might oh, have just been the more commonly used term, you know, to be yeah. like, hey, look at you nerd. Oh, he's a Trekkie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Live long and prosper. I'm, I'm, called a, I'm a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a I'm not a, I'm not a hacky. Yeah. I'm a yeah, hacker. Yeah, I'm not a hacky. I'm a hacker. <laughs> um, so so I, w- I would be, if I, w- if I were a big fan back then, I would be wanting to like read any article that told me about behind the scenes. I'd be oh, wanting okay. to read. So I think, I think uh, it'd be fine. I think, I think it's a good idea. And also, I, I might want to propose though, that maybe to start either you or you and I, Marvin, watch it first, just to yeah, absolutely exactly. confirm that, was that, there, be my are no, yeah. Yeah. that there are me. no spoilers for, for Ricardo. Yeah. My proposal Protect was going to be that Dan and I watch it first. Yeah. And then we go, this is clear. This is good. Yeah. All right, let's do it. So you run it yeah, by legal. I think it's, and like, then I tell think it's, it's easy okay. to forget often. Like if you know everything about a show, you kind of don't notice things that are technically spoilers or not. If you're yeah. watching it. So yeah, dude. It's yeah. so, all right. Thanks for the suggestion then. Uh, I guess we will, maybe we'll make that our season three finale episode. Um, we'll yeah. have the uh, we'll uh, a discussion of chaos on the bridge, which I have never seen before. Um, so I'm at, it's actually hosted by William Shatner. So that'll be kind oh, of he's a piece of shit. <laughs> well, that <laughs> is a really interesting way to frame that because it's yeah. like, what does William Shatner have to say about TNG? I don't know. Well, he, does he just have a shit eating grin the whole time. It's like, look I what f- they did. I feel like his ulterior motive is to show, look what a shit show this show is. Yeah, basically, that's what it feels like already to me. <laughs> and that is kind of fascinating. So, so but I'm it's kind like, of wow. interested just to know if he has that like um that viewpoint on it because like like <laughs> um, just or- like start off like stare like just <laughs> assaulting the guy I was like oh you think this show is so great do you <laughs> <laughs> let me show you what tng was really like because <laughs> uh, like i wonder because like because like 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 john delancey because he had that one role in my little pony's discord yeah. uh, he created that uh the my little pony the brony documentary and it turned out to kind of just be like a cash grab thing like it didn't like really like explore it very well it was just kind of like a pandering thing so like part hmm. of me also wonders if like chaos and the bridge is also like quick cash in for you know will and chat i mean it's gotta be to some extent <laughs> why else would he do it uh, wait it was, so was it produced by him too uh for, but john delancey no i'm talking about uh oh, oh, the, oh I, like, I don't what know was william all, shatner's all i know is that because john delancey was like a producer for that other documentary like you know it's it's his motives but oh so it's apparently directed by him William Shatner William directed? Shatner. Yes. Oh, so, that makes it even more fascinating. I know. That, it really makes me wonder if, you know, what Weird. motivation he has to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you say it was released only within the span of like the last couple of years. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't quite know, but mm, like I guess we'll I see. Die, I have to, I have to let everyone I know. I got the record fucking straight. <laughs> Uh, so, so thanks for the tip, Dan. And, uh, if you guys want to send us any emails, you can, uh, send that to us at contact at newbie, star Trek dot com. And we're sorry. Uh, we're all out of first contacts. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yes. We already had a first contact that's gone. Yeah. It's we don't have any more second contacts either. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, if you, if you've been like listening to us in general, cause if you're still here, it's been almost two hours and you're still listening. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, that we have other things going on. We have uh, the Fugitive Frames film podcast, uh, which right. you know we discuss films, do commentary tracks for films sometimes. And uh, there was an episode that's supposed to come out, but there was yep. like a thing with money with the, the credit yeah. card that prevented it from. Coming. I fucked up. I fucked up, guys. <laughs> I apologize if you guys are, if you guys are like you 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 told us last week. Uh, I fucked up. I, I 
I lost my credit card and, and the long thing, story short, it's, sure it's, it's so okay short. now. So it, it, it's, it's okay. The server's back up. And, uh, <laughs> when you're listening to this, it's already up. It's, um, uh, our long awaited drunk phase one Marvel review by Savannah. Yeah. Um, where cool. she just shits on all the movies and <laughs> we try to defend them and she's disgruntled. Yeah. Um, but we have some commentaries coming up. We're going to have a commentary by the end of the month, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, the movie still surprises. I don't know. I, there's so many. We don't know yet. That's the thing. Movies That's why it's a surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I have a list going that I've no. shared with everyone that, uh, I, I, I have someone who, who, um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm eating a, a fucking peach because I'm so hungry. No, please. Um, I had someone who, who, who told me. <laughs> 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 oh I'm my sorry. god, dude! I'm sorry. Oh, that was good. I'm sorry. You got me, dude. Uh, um, <sighs> god damn it, Dan! <laughs> <laughs> um, I was choked on my goddamn peach, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Um, because yeah. I knew exactly. I was like, somebody's got to say it, and and you just said it, <laughs> and I'm I'm so happy. Uh, you get me. Um, <laughs> so so um, I had forgot where I was going with this. I don't know. I'm sorry, <laughs> this thing derailed me. <laughs> oh, we have a movie coming up, and we don't know what it is, but we're we're gonna be doing uh, commentaries. But oh, I knew what I was gonna say. I had somebody uh, uh tweet Twitter direct message me, whatever you do on Twitter, <laughs> and uh-huh. they said, hey. I started listening to the Mario Brothers uh, uh, commentary, which was our last commentary. Mm. Yes, um, and they didn't know it was a commentary because they didn't read. <laughs> oh, right. the, they didn't read the thing, but they said, "Oh, it was just as entertaining not watching it as it was like because he was just listening to it mm-hmm. and kind of remembering." And he's like, "It was it was entertaining not not having it as a commentary, so <laughs> it, it plays." Uh, so you know, I have legitimately it's- done that for commentary tracks in general. Like like when I was a kid, I would just listen to the Austin Powers commentary. <laughs> Oh, like a really? lot shaped Marvin yeah. into the man we know him as today. Austin Powers International Man of Mystery is the first DVD I ever owned. Really? So I played that commentary track back a lot. And the second one was Gold, not Gold, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies as my deep, but that didn't have a commentary track. So you just loved spy movies and their parodies. <laughs> I think the meanwhile, first DVD, my yeah. first DVD ever was, oh, sorry, Ricardo, you, you go ahead. No, so I think mine was a matrix. Damn. Uh, damn. That's, that's a, a, that's a pretty good decent first, first DVD, even well, though all those DVD. copies of the matrix were really shitty. Warner brothers, cardboard. Yep. yep. Yeah. They were clip, horrible. Clip, clip, clip. I, I accidentally so sat, on, I sat on my fucking DVD oh, cover and it, and no. it bent. Yeah, uh, dude. And it wasn't uh, one of those where it, the plastic ones, if you, if you sat on them or broke them, you could just take out the sleeve and put them in a new one. Yeah. But those yeah, Warner yeah. Brothers ones, they fucked yeah. you, dude. They yeah. fucked you. They it's sure printed did. On and that also and- if like, if God forbid you try to do anything that requires like clipping out those fucking perforated proof of purchases on the, oh, on yep, the side yep. of the spine. I never bothered. Good luck. I never yeah, exactly. bothered doing that. Fuck no, that. Fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Anyway, my first DVD was Pokemon, the first movie. Oh yeah. With the laser. Also <laughs> Warner Brothers distribution. So that was also in a shitty case. With the laser menu. <laughs> Pokemon Mon. It's literal. Okay, someone, someone also thought that that was funny and literally made a YouTube video. That's just, just a, the menu. <laughs> just the menu. If you can find it, look up Pokemon the movie menu <laughs> on YouTube. It's it's, it's someone. It's a sight to behold. Some DVD author spent a good fifteen minutes on this. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm very grateful to that person <laughs> Before that allows we sign me off. to go and find it whenever I feel like I need to see it. Uh, yeah. Before we sign off, hey guys, tweet at us if you find out what that fucking show was. Uh, oh, was yeah. yeah. Bruce, yeah, go Lee's, for it, Bruce Lee's daughter, and it was a martial arts American gladiator type show. Yeah, Thanks. I don't know what it is. I, I've tried to Google it before, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. But, oh, um, also, I forgot to mention, we also have a YouTube channel, yeah. uh, Fugitive Games. We're doing LPs right now. We just started Shadow of the Colossus. It's fucking cool. Dan and it I have never. Well, good. Dan has oh, played it before. Have you not? Have you? Not, you guys never played it before. Dan has never beaten no. it before, and I've never played it before. Okay. So, so I started playing it, and then I was like, ah, "This is really fun," but I wish I could just watch it. So I had my brother in law come over, and I just got. <laughs> this is before. I, this is before I had a kid. Uh, I, I called him over, and I just got fucking blitz. Like I, like I and I watched him play it, and then and then I blinked, and then I, I opened my eyes, and he was gone. And he's like, he's like, you fell asleep. I paused it, and I left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's beautiful wait hold on hold on hold on that, that's true you guys are talking about it, it wasn't uh, how recent was it oh it's old oh, it's like 90s. very old like okay very old yeah it's like it's like early 90s yeah mid 90s 
type of show. But but yeah, we're going through Shadow of the Colossus, still going through uh, Batman Arkham Origins, and Dan is still playing Greatest Attorney games, uh, which are really interesting. They're far more serial than the other uh, Ace Attorney games have been. Yeah, so, and so the, the way the cases are structured are like they're different. Each each one of them has felt a yeah, little different. Yeah, it's not it's not the typical investigate uh, trial setup. Exactly, exactly. It's it's based on what the story needs versus what. Yeah, is like they've uh, with their Herlock Sholmes mechanic, they kind of introduced something that is like courtroom gameplay inside of investigative gameplay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So eh, it's, it's fun. It's fun. They kind of solved investigations. Because because originally investigations were kind of the part of the of the Ace Attorney games you kind of wanted to just skip, <laughs> you wanted to go to the court. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like they've de-emphasized the whole like you got to go to a place to find this thing just so you can go back to talk to this guy and show yeah, him this yeah. thing and the 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 um adventure novelish version like setup of it it doesn't seem as strong or as which necessary. is fine by me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you can find all of these things we're talking about. The Fugitive I do a Frames bunch of podcast. British accents if that interests you. Oh, that's you. true too. Yeah, yeah. He's he, Dan has been voice acting the whole thing, so that's been fun. Uh, but yeah, you can find all of that stuff at FugitiveFrames.com. So that's just that one link. That edge you. No, damn it. <laughs> you can, yeah, it's just, it's just all, of the, all of the stuff. Fugitive Frames Film Podcast, the YouTube channel. You can, and this podcast, you can find all of that one link, FugitiveFrames.com. And uh, yeah, next time we're going to be watching a personal favorite of mine. Uh, it's Pen Pals. Uh, and Pen Pals is one of those sentimental episodes. Um, it's going to be neat. I, I really like that episode. I'm looking forward to it. So um, this episode's already gone too long. So I'll just say, okay, goodbye, everybody. You guys stay safe. We'll see you guys next time with Pen Pals. See you. Buongiorno. Later, guys. Later.